dessert. Is it on? Hey. Let me move the, the microphone. Doesn't micro mean small? This is a big device. I don't see anything micro about it. Okay, is it working? I don't see it yet. It hasn't popped up. How do I view my own live? <laughs> Can you tell I almost never live stream? Okay, here. I think this will take me to it. Sorry if you're talking to me and I have advice. I don't... Okay, it's working. Hello. Okay, I'm just seeing the chat now. Here, and everyone always tells me switch it to live chat, not top chat. Okay, perfect. Hi, Eden. Hey, Scott. My Kayla, Barb, Arian, Sasha, hello. Hey, Sarah, Funfetti, Unbannable. We'll see about that. <laughs> hey, Bethany, Starry-Eyed, Ezra, everybody else. Um, so yeah, basically, a lot of you have been asking, are you going to cover the Rich Lux interview? Are you going to cover what was said in it and everything. And um, I took a look at this thing and honestly, like an hour and 40 minutes, I was like, there's no way that I could make this into a video. <laughs> it would take forever. It would take forever. So I figured the best thing we could do is we could go live for a few hours. We can chat, we can watch the interview and just kind of hang out for a bit. That sound okay to everybody? Does that sound hashtag okay to everybody? Um, watching from the UK. Hello, Renee. Glad you could make it. Can I be a moderator? Well, I don't know, Angelina Dugan. Can I trust you to be a moderator? <laughs> you know what? Since you asked, and apparently I don't have enough of them, sure, you, you can be a moderator. Okay. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jem. Hey, Jordy from Michigan. Hello, cowgirl. You're disgusted with Rich Lux. He'll let Jeffrey ruin him too. So I do not, ha I, I, I have a good um, footing with who Jeffrey is and his past and everything. Who is Rich Lux? Is Rich Lux just like another beauty person? Is he just like, um, like one of the makeup YouTubers? Like, like what, what, how did, how did he like, you know, become a thing on YouTube. Was he just like a makeup person? Eugenia will never spill tea. Mistakes were made. Oh, hey, Stacy. Love you, Jordan. Thank you so much. Thank you for the first super chat of the stream. Oh, and your first super chat ever. Thanks so much. Watching from South Africa. How's, how's, how's the weather down in South Africa? I've heard South Africa's dangerous. I've always wanted to visit South Africa, but I've heard it's dangerous. Can you confirm or deny? If I... C <laughs> I... <laughs> I... I'm speechless. I'm, I'm quite literally speechless. This, oh, uh, well, first of all, thank you so much. Um, that is incredible. <laughs> I'm like shaking. That is incredibly generous of you. Um, thank you so much, that damn stripper. That is, oh my gosh. Love you, Jordan. Happy belated birthday from your stripper bestie. <sighs> Wow, that is incredibly generous of you. I, I'm, I'm like at a loss for words. I've never received a donation that big before. Um, thank you so much. That is uh, like, wow. I, I seriously like, do, do <laughs> please do not mistake my lack for words right now is just me like, I, I don't know. I'm just like in a state of shock. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you so much for being here, that damn stripper. We always have a good time on live stream. I'm so glad that you're here. 
Whoa. <laughs> oh my. Rich Lux. Uh, we got Rich Lux in the chat. That was, that was, that, that joke wasn't too good. Like, you know what I mean? Like rich person, but like rich Lux. Eh, I, that, I need to, I need to run that joke through the editor. I'll come back next time with something better. Hey, KXMXC, thank you for your uploads. They always make my day. Oh, well, thank you so much for being here. Of course. That is amazing. Damn it. You stripper making us broke look bad. <laughs> I'm I'm seriously at a loss for words. That is incredible. I know I keep saying the same thing over and over again. It's just, I just like, I don't know. Uh, he bought Jeffrey a bag when they met in a hotel, and Jeffrey said, "You know what, Shanda Panda? I did see that. I I, I heard that they um they went to was it Vegas? Was it, okay? Answer me this: Was this? Am I talking about the same Vegas trip they went to, um, with Trisha that caused all that drama with Hair by Jay? Is that the same Vegas trip, or am I thinking of two different things? Because I remember they said that Rich went to Vegas with them, and they went in Louis Vuitton." And the and they were making they were basically making fun of Rich because they went in Louis Vuitton and he bought the cheapest thing in there, which is I guess a wallet. Am I, am I thinking about the same thing? Getting my snacks and cozy blanket, blanket. <laughs> what am I talking about? Getting my snacks and cozy blanket. Thank you so much, Kaya. Hey, Ashley. Shout out to all the SW in the chat. SW. Should I know that? Me and my BF Watt both watch you. Quality couple time. Of course. Thanks so much for being here, Aqua and boyfriend. What happened to Eugenia? Um, nothing really happened. She just did a uh, interview with this guy again. Now, she has done an interview with Rich before. Um... Nothing went on in it. I, I, I did a video on it before. It wasn't nearly this long. It was not an hour and 40 minutes long like this. But um, these kind of interviews are giving Dance Monkey. You know that song by Tones and I? Tones and I, Dance Monkey. It's kind of like, well, you know, I see the way you shine on social media. Come put your hand in mine. Dance monkey, dance monkey, dance monkey, and then I'll make you do it all again. So here we are making her do it all again in another interview. Kind of giving dance monkey these interviews, um, definitely. Oh, okay. I had never seen that acronym before, SW. Yeah, he got Jeffrey the cheap. Oh, he bought the wallet for Jeffrey, but it wasn't cheap. Okay. Now, was that the same, tr was that the same Trisha trip? I didn't see anybody answer that. Does anyone know? Everybody answered what SW was, but no one answered if the... <laughs> yes, you are right. Okay, so that was the... So a lot of, a lot went down. Okay, that was... Okay, that was the same Vegas trip with Trisha. A lot went down that Vegas trip. <laughs> that... that <clears throat> sorry. That is when Trisha had a nacho slapped out of her hand. Jordy has a stripper sugar. No, that is uh, that is a joke from uh, the Amber Lynn side of what I do. So, like, there's a few different people I talk about over here, and like that stripper is uh, that's like a inside joke about something that went on in the Amber Lynn side of uh, what I do here on YouTube. So, if you don't watch Amber Lynn, you probably won't get that reference. Okay, y'all, should we hop, skip, and jump right into this interview? I think Jeffrey said it was the cheapest thing at the store. I yeah, I remember Jeffrey dragged him for it. So is this is this kind of what Jeffrey does? Just like roasts all of his friends, but they like they they respect him anyway. <laughs> he used to be in Amy Slayton's comments sections to kissing her butt. Are we talking about Rich? I see you tagged somebody else, but I didn't see what that other person said. Rich, anything for the views, Lux. Hmm. Jordy, did you see Eugenia playing frisbee in full clothes alone at the beach? 
Was that a short? If if so, I think it was. Or did she put it on TikTok? I think, yeah, 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 I did see that. Jeffrey's all about the drama. You know what, I'm going, that damn stripper, I'm gonna put you as a different kind of moderator. There's like a, there's two tiers to it. Okay, there we go. Um, Jeffrey inserts himself into every drama and profits off of it. So Jeffrey, if, if something's going on, if something, you know, if tea is being spilled, he will find a way to insert himself to profit from it financially. Is that kind of what I'm picking up on right now? <laughs> Rich people. Hey, GC. Jordy, please do a quick recap of who is doing this interview because I have no clue. Okay, so basically what this is all about is this person right here. Um, this person, Jeffree Star and Jeffree's, I don't know what Paul is. I don't know if Paul is employed by Jeffree or if they're just friends. But basically, there's like a little posse of them. And they have taken a liking to Eugenia recently and they go on live with her on TikTok and they they basically kind of play into the narrative that Eugenia is trying to perpetuate here on the internet. She's, tr you know, what she's basically trying to do. It's mainly the internet saying one thing and then Eugenia turning around and saying, no, I, everything's okay. What are you talking about? So Eugenia, you, or Rich, Jeffrey and Paul and all, some of these other people in this little TikTok posse, they're kind of all on Eugenia's side. And a lot of people aren't really sure what their role or motive is in involving themselves with Eugenia and kind of doing this stuff. Um, it, it's strange. It's definitely strange. Um, a lot of people see right through it and basically just say, well, you know what, this is, this is all for clout. This is all for financial gain. Um, I just... I don't see how. Uh, I I don't I, I don't know because apparently a lot of what's said is in this interview is Rich saying, you know, a lot of you are mistaken, a lot of you don't know what's actually going on, a lot of you are wrong about it, and I just I, I don't know sometimes if they're playing a role or they're playing a part or that's how they truly feel because like I've said time and time again, Rich. Paul, Jeffrey, these people with these platforms like this, they're not stupid. They're not stupid. So when you look at something and then you pick up on the behaviors and, you know, the communication that they're giving out on social media, you, you just have to think about it because it's like, well, I know that you're not a stupid person. I know that you're not, you know, going against what pretty much everybody in the room is thinking. So it's like, why are you doing that? So that's kind of what I want to take a look at this interview and figure out. Uh, Lucy Pineapple, hey so much. It's shady that Rich went live late at night to address the comments, but never saved the live. Also admitted Eugenia has a lawyer for interviews. Oh, okay. So Lucy, let me, by the way, thank you for so much for the super chat. Um, is Eugenia's lawyer for interviews like this, I don't know. Like, did he have to be there with her live when this happened? So if, say, Rich started to talk about something or ask a question that was really not something that Eugenia should have been talking about, did he kind of like nudge Eugenia and go, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're not talking about that. Uh-uh. Because I, I figured that there was an attorney on retainer. Because I think what happened after Jacqueline, I think that Deb, uh, you know, wised up, wi wi wised up with like a question mark on the end of it after everything that happened with Jacqueline. So if Deb's main goal is to keep Eugenia out of, you know, harm's way, uh, then obviously having an attorney on retainer that can sort of point and guide Eugenia in the right direction would probably be beneficial. Jeffrey only surrounds himself with people he believes that he is better than. Okay. So it's sort of like like a condescending atmosphere. Like he, ha he likes to have subordinates. If, uh, if you're someone that stands up to him or questions him or you know, call something out that he said that he might have shouldn't, that that's pretty much grounds for dismissal. I no longer want to be surrounded with you. I want to, because it's interesting you say that, Jessica, because I, I kind of pick up on that from Paul, Rich, and Eugenia, all three of them, 
All three of them. They kiss Jeffrey's butt. Lo- love him. Love him. Anything he said, like, so funny. You're so funny. You're so amazing. You're so smart. You're so, like, you're gorgeous. You're beautiful. You look like Linda Evangelista. You're a model. He could walk out onto a YouTube live in a diaper and they would say, Jeffrey, your smile is gorgeous. Very that. <laughs> Did anyone give that reference? <laughs> Some of you had to have got that reference. When Shane came to her house, the lawyer was there too. Oh, okay, Katie. Interesting. Interesting. Well, you know what they say about lawyers. Uh, I don't think anyone has ever mentioned this, but the email under Eugenia's... So what do, what do you mean her company? Because I know that sometimes you can go on someone's YouTube channel and click around like on their about me and see an email. Is that what you're talking about? Her company. Does she sell merch that I'm not aware of? Lawyer for interviews. Yeah. Well, I mean, she doesn't do a lot of them. I didn't stay on the live long since it was like 1 a.m. Eastern, but he mentioned he couldn't ask the hard questions because of the lawyer. Oh, so he kind of came on and explained later. You know, that would be interesting if anyone had a VOD of that. Because I, I know that there are some people out there that screen record basically anytime Eugenia, Jeffrey, Rich, and Paul go live and they have it. So that would be interesting to see a link to that. Okay, so you're basically saying he came on to clarify later. Because I'll tell you what, guys. He took heat for this. This interview and everything. I don't know if he took heat for it the first time around. But this time around, people weren't really having it. Um, you should see the comments under this video. It's it's really not... Prob- I, I don't know. I don't know much about Rich. But if he's used to praise and people you know, building him up and everything like this, um, this was a 180. Because a lot of people under the comments in this, and it got a lot of thumbs up and everything, a lot of those comments were critiquing him and were basically saying that this interview was um, crap. You need to check out Eugenia's first live stream. You mean like ever? Like when she was like 12 or 14? Please notice me. Hi, Alyssa. Jeffrey is the lord of narcissism. Hey, Gabuko. Eugenia Cooney LLC is a legit business. I'm going to have to look into that after the stream. Hey, Winter Allen, how are you today? I commented on Rich. I'm disgusted with him. Well, good, but bad for Rich. LLCs are meaningless just to save your own butt. I didn't know about Shane's visit to Eugenia. Oh, yeah, there's a whole thing. And you know what, guys? I keep saying it. I'm so sorry. I say I keep saying we're going to do the interview or we're, we're going to do. Well, I guess it was an interview. We're going to do the documentary or whatever that Shane did. I keep pushing it off. We're going to get to it. We will. I promise soon in October, in October. I'm, I'm speaking that if I if it's November 1st, if the clock strikes November 1st and I haven't covered the Shane Dawson interview on Eugenia yet, you can. Cancel me. <laughs> I'm thinking, what's the worst thing they could do to me? <laughs> oh my. Been watching heaps of your videos, but haven't heard of this. Haven't heard of Eugenia or the rich stuff. The ri- this is very recent. This is very recent. So if you haven't heard of it, um, that's okay. Because it is pretty new. A live Jordy. Oh, yep. We are live page. All right, guys. So I'm going to turn my fan on because it randomly got really hot in here. And um, let's take a little looky look at this interview. Um, I will tell you, the beginning of this is very extra. Like he he does like a title sequence or he does like some sort of like intro of like sad music and like her crying about the diaper and stuff. Like it, it's very extra. So I, I just want to mentally prepare you for it. Okay. One sec. My, the fan in my room is kind of like a double-ended sword because it makes me more cool 
because my computer generates so much heat, <laughs> but it makes noise. Like, I don't know if you guys, if my, is, if my, is my mic picking that up? Like the, like, ugh, God. So it's like, if I stay cold, it makes a noise. But if I turn off the noise, then I sweat. <laughs> oh, hey, Nicole, thanks so much for the super sticker. All right, y'all, let's start this. What's going on everyone, it's Rich Lux. In today's video, we're gonna be interviewing Eugenia Cooney. She opens up about so many things, such as being 5150, ex-friends, a mobile crisis team that got sent to her house and police officers as well. This interview is very long and it, we touched on some very triggering things. So if you don't wanna watch it, this is your warning. Drop a like and a comment because it helps the algorithm so, so, so much. Let's jump right into the drama. You guys are so demanding of me. Like, guys, like, the thing is, like, you guys don't understand, okay? Like, everyone just comes to my streams, like, what are we doing to me lately, okay? Was that the diaper day? No. This, because I, I don't remember her wearing this uh, when the diaper thing happened. Huh. It, see, you know, normally... Eugenia, it's water off a duck's back. I don't care. Come in here, say whatever you want. I'm going to smile and move on. But this got to her. Uh, let me put you on with you. Wait, you want to give me additional information? I want you to just take a, take a look at this video that was posted just a few days ago. And I want okay, you to tell me your honest opinion of if you think this is healthy. Mother's saying her daughter is very, very skinny, otherwise healthy, though. That's what she's telling me. And she also said that oftentimes, she's saying oftentimes rumors are spread about her daughter due to her um, very, very skinny stature. And then she's saying that she's been, she's uh, had people swatting her house. You know what swatting is? A social media personality has people worried about her health as well as her followers. Now, take a look at this. There are now renewed calls for YouTuber Eugenia Cooney to be removed from YouTube. The fear is that her image could have a negative impact on the emotionally vulnerable out there. Cooney has been known for her skeletal frame since 2013. She took a break from social media, but she returned with new videos and photos looking smaller than ever. Mm. This reads as an obituary. I, you're not wrong. Oh, Ivan and Cornbread. Thank you so much for the super stickers, guys. For the fans. She also cried about her TikTok account getting suspended. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, she basically came on here and said, I understand if you guys need to report me, if you need to flag my account for inappropriate behavior, I understand. Go ahead and report me. And she was crying the whole time while saying it. That was very odd. Very odd. Almost as odd as Deb Cooney with a big smile on her face dancing with her daughter in the bedroom. Just, I don't know. There's there's a lot to be said about Deb. Ugh, I'm nervous because it's going to get hot. I know. Are you guys ready? Are, you, are they ready over there? For a crazy interview? I think they're ready. Hey guys, we got uh, Eugenia Cooney emotes in the chat. If you're subscribed, you can leave her little face in there. We have Jeffree Star. We have Paul Dow. I need a Paul emote. See, it's the, it's their little group. It's their little posse. <laughs> it is. It's Je and he Jeffrey's the leader. <laughs> it's Jeffrey. And who who do we think is second in command? Do we think Paul's second in command or is Rich second in command? Well, you know what? If if Jeffrey dragged Rich for the whole wallet in Vegas thing, <laughs> I guess Rich would be second in command. Or, sorry, Paul would be. Hmm. Check Deb is a mean girl on YouTube mocking EG and close up. Okay. Thank you so much, Kelly. Rich went overboard with this, with the eyeliner. I know nothing about makeup. Paul's second in command. Oh, like 
you have you have poly mode too? Yeah, I just got one today. It's it's in there right now. Oh, that's so awesome. I need to add that. I got you, I got Jeffrey. I wish there was more room for them, but I'm like, we got yeah, we got to leave them in the room. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Rich. I keep getting some of these like random. You get like those spam requests sometimes, or something. And you know what? I I think that it's sort of like Queen B. I think that Eugenia would not have much interest in Paul or Rich if they were not connected to Jeffrey. But because they're friends with Jeffrey or they're subordinates to Jeffrey, Eugenia goes. In her mind, she thinks, well, if they're connected to Jeffrey and I love Jeffrey, I revere Jeffrey, then I like these people too by default. So is Eugenia just kind of doing these interviews because this is like an extension of Jeffrey? If, if it's related to Jeffrey at all, she's she's in love. She's like, okay, yeah, I'll do this. You know, like, would, would she be giving her time to someone like Rich Lux if Jeffrey was not in the equation? Alana Marie, hey there. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Brenda Chapman. Hey there. Just say happy birthday to me, Jordy. Brenda Chapman, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks for being here. You think Rich is second? Jeffrey's the puppeteer. Eugenia's outfit looks itchy. Um it it doesn't look comfortable, I'll say that. But I've never worn anything like this before. <laughs> I think you're right about that, Jordy. I think it's because they're all close to Jeffrey. Yeah, you know, I, so I've kind of talked about why I think Eugenia reveres Jeffrey the way that she does. It, it, this goes back many years, many, many, many years, to back, to back to 2008 MySpace. This is a long time that she has loved Jeffrey. So I don't know if, it, if it's just because these people are friends with Jeffrey or if they're seen with Jeffrey, but maybe it's like the friend of your friend is my friend kind of thing. Eh. People <laughs> just like, they never stop. It's so crazy. But yeah, so okay. if you see me clicking, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is this is interesting because you know usually people they always they do interviews like and I know we're so early into it and I keep pausing I won't I won't do this whole time I'm sorry but um he's not even really paying attention to her you know he's like like while she's talking and everything he's like playing on his phone <laughs> I think I think he'll be engaged with the stream when it's time for him to talk it's like if Eugenia has anything to say it's like okay yeah okay all right hold on let me finish this Candy Crush level. Okay, all right. Uh, anyway, so Eugenia. <laughs> I feel like Eugenia is trying to get control of the narrative. So she's doing these interviews with people who won't ask the hard questions. Which, and really, I, I mean, this doesn't do anything. But I guess that she doesn't see it that way. Like, a majority of people, the majority of social media will see right through something like this. But maybe Eugenia thinks, like, if I have a sit-down interview and speak my piece and tell how I'm really feeling, then maybe the haters will cool it. Uh, girl, you, I mean, Eugenia speaks her piece every day on live stream. Every single day, people come into her TikTok streams. They say the exact same things, and she responds with the exact same responses. So I'm not really sure how this is any different. She's been wearing that dress for like a month. I've seen her wear it a couple times. Jeffrey is rich as idol. So is this is this just like a like an MLM? Is this like a pyramid scheme? Like of who can love Jeffrey the most? Like if Jeffrey's at the top of the pyramid and then like <laughs> you have like Rich a little bit below on the pyramid looking up to Jeffrey as his idol and then you have like Eugenia below Rich. Like is it just all a bunch of people crawling up a pyramid to kiss Jeffrey's butt? Is that is that what this is? <laughs> It's so crazy, people, oh. Uh, well, I mean, she doesn't see it like that. She doesn't see it like that, April. And there's no one in her inner circle or anyone intervening to um, talk or say something. Like, off off the screen, or they'll, they'll pre-record them. And so it's really, fun. it's different to do a live interview so that people can see, like, everything. Just keep it real, like, yeah. Like, a live interview, I feel like it's kind of, like, it's 
it's totally different. And you're like, I think one of the only people I've seen do it. So I know. I'm like, I'm watch. I'm pioneering the live interview. It's crazy. Yeah, it I don't... kind of makes it a little intense because you also have like all the chat, like, you know, just like going crazy and <laughs> saying whatever they're saying, but you know. <laughs> Okay. Well, all right. Well, I'm ready if you are. You guys? Okay. Are right. you still letting them go crazy? Are you still just kind of making it like free for all crazy? We'll do we'll do free for all for the beginning because it's pretty pretty okay. mild. Sounds good. Yeah. Whatever and then, you want to do. Yeah. Right? And I'll let you know before it gets wild, then we'll we'll switch awesome. over. Yeah. I'm just like hopefully I'm doing everything right. So, okay. Cool. Well, I'm ready. Why do they all love Jeffrey? Um. Guys, isn't I don't know if he's a billionaire, but Jeffrey has a lot, a lot, a lot of money from his cosmetics company and everything. Um, and also that like Jeffrey isn't just some, you know, sort of like like a whimsical, transient social media person. He has had his name in the game for a very long time. Like I remember being 11 years old knowing who Jeffrey Star was on MySpace. Like he's been around for a very long time. He's a very influential, powerful, wealthy person. And some people see that and you know they they see opportunity or you know they see an opportunity ride the coattails or I'm not really sure. And I, I think that sometimes in life there are, there are followers and there are leaders if you want to consider the concept of that and everything. So maybe they just like to follow Jeffrey, follow in his footsteps. They, they like being told what to do. They like taking orders. They like, uh, you know, somebody else taking all the attention and them just kind of, you know, hiding in the shadow of Jeffrey's butt while they kiss it. Like, I'm not really sure. Rich is Gretchen. <laughs> Rich is Garrett. Oh my God. Jeffrey has a boss B mindset. Well, I mean, boss B mindset implies like, it's like a good thing, right? They all kiss his butt. They do. Do you think they take their lipstick off before they? <laughs> Whatever you are, I'm excited. All right, so my all right, guys. Here we go. Three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? It's Rich Lux, and we have Eugenia Cooney here, and it's such a good pleasure to have her here because she doesn't do interviews that often. And so, you guys, keep it classy in the chat. Leave a thumbs up. Give her some love. And I just want to say thank you for your time, Eugenia, because it's priceless. So just thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm super happy to be here. And it's like, if I'm going to do an interview with with anyone, like, you've always just been like such a sweet and awesome person. So it's like, I the person I always want to do it with is you, Rich. So I'm happy to be here and like doing this. Yeah. Thank you for the sub cat. Thank you. We're going to be talking about in this interview, we're going to talk about Eugenia Cooney, how she got started her relationship with her mom. We're gonna be talking about um, ex-friends. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, Eugenia Cooney being, is it 5150, is that the term? Yeah, that's We're gonna talk about like the trolls and you you being swatted to your house and so much more. So first thing I just wanna start, okay, so how did you get started on the whole Eugenia Cooney? Cause to me it's a brand. I think Eugenia Cooney's a brand. How'd you get started? I think Rich is a brand. It's like the King Rich. <laughs> So I, I think that you might have been on there like way back in, in the day. Have you ever heard of like you now? Yes, I remember. But see, I thought for some reason, I thought you were already on YouTube first and then you now. No, I started YouTube like after that. You're skinny. Well, thanks for saying I'm skinny, Brett. Black makes you look skinnier. Oh, I guess I should wear black a oh, lot oh, then, Rhea. Like I kind of like started like being on there like like way back. And then I kind of found out about YouTube and I thought it was cool. Vlogging with Jen. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Glad to have you with us. Casper, Wyoming is a very affluent place. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that Jeffrey just opened up a store over there. <laughs> she repeats and repeats the same words. I'm sort of expecting that. I mean, like, he just listed off the topics of what he wants to cover throughout the stream. And I'm just thinking to myself, these are already topics that have been talked about. And she's answered to them. There are multiple videos about them. Um, I don't I don't know if we would get anything new said from Eugenia, but maybe. 
cool that you could kind of like, you know, make videos about like whatever you're passionate about, whether that's like makeup or just like making a vlog video or whatever. And it seemed like a lot of fun. And at the time, um, I was actually like homeschooling, like, like I was doing like online school. Cause that's right, because you did go to a normal high school I and then you got like bullied and people were like just being mean to you. And then you were like, I'm just going to do homeschool. It was pretty bad, honestly, at the time to the point that I was like, you know, like my like my my parents like they're cool with it like i'm probably maybe yeah, like, better well, doing like online i relate to you because like people like you jeffree star shade Dawson, like i re i relate to them because i've always like beat to the beat of my own drum i've been called names like i've always been like that fat kid in school and all that stuff like that so like i relate to it that way when i see you and i see people leaving negative comments and whatever they're saying i'm like if you leaving a neg negative comment is not going to do any good you know what i'm saying so it's like you calling somebody out is not going to do any good. You know, it's like yelling at somebody sometimes. So I'm just like, stop. So when I see you get so much negative, I walk that flame. So I get it. So I get why you got homeschooled. Oh my gosh. It's so true, Rich. And I feel the same way with like, you know, people like you and Jeffrey and Shane and like, you know, hearing like some of the things that like you guys have gone through, like I can definitely just like relate in a lot of ways. And yeah. Um, Matt, I think you make a really good point. The early 2000s were a lot different. Does anyone else remember when Nicole Richie was weighing girls before permitting entry to a party that there was a, oh i mean no i had never heard of that before but just when i think of the early 2000s in general just it was body it was body 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 waist low rise jeans it, it was that that was really I, I don't know so i guess that maybe that was sort of like put out into media at the time by um a lot of the girls like on the forefront of uh you know who was popular back then like paris nicole uh christina every everybody had that uh you know itty bitty waist he wants to talk about himself so badly it's so easy to derail in a rich lux interview mm. hey willow rogers a jordy live the day after my birthday oh happy day after your birthday good to see you again jord nice to see you again willow rogers thanks for being here and thanks for the donation michelle hey i caught you live again feeling lucky oh and it's not even saint patrick's day how about that michelle <laughs> thanks for being here they were huge back then hmm you know, and, and then, I mean, like, luckily, I mean, it, I don't think it's where, you know, the extent of where it would be ideal, but I don't, we're, we're never going to be living in an ideal world, but at least it's becoming a little bit more body positivity friendly-ish. And I know that there are, you know, sides of the spectrum in it and everything. I mean, you know, there are some people just saying like, hey, you know, don't be an a-hole. Don't, don't talk about someone like that. Like, you don't know what they've been through. You don't know like the medical procedures that they've had. Like, you don't, so things like that. But um, yeah, it, uh, it's definitely an interesting controversial topic to be talking about in today's day and age. But at least it's getting a little bit better, right? I mean, if you look back 20 years ago versus now, it's like, well, arguably, I guess, yeah, things are better. <laughs> And, um, and I hope you know you don't ever deserve it. Like you're seriously like one of the sweetest people. And like, it, it, it's kind of helped me like, and maybe you too. It just, it kind of helps you get thicker skin. Yeah, in a way, yeah. because I kind of feel like after like so much time, I guess you kind of just get, like you get used to just kind of hearing like everything about yourself. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, you know, like, yeah, sometimes it's too bad people are so like terrible, but you yeah. get so used to it that it's kind of just like, you know, what else can people really say about you, you know? So that's so that's how you got started it's on you now and then yeah. you now is not even around anymore i don't think it's no no it is it is around just no one's really on it yeah i think now it's just kind of like it, it kind of gets a little, little bit downhill and yeah. like but it, yeah. it, it really does it really does mimic instagram but it, it more so gives me vibes of of, of TikTok. it kind of does like when i first started like going live here with kind of some of the gifts and things like that i was like oh my gosh that reminds me of like you now days like yeah. that Becky with the makeup box there. That's such a pretty gift. Thank you, Becky. Um, it's like, it kind of does remind me. Oh my God, Lizzie. I remember that. And you know what, guys? Do you, who remembers like 2011 Tumblr? 
like 2010, 2011 Tumblr. I remember, what was I back then? I was like 15. I was six, 15. Yeah, 15 when I was back on like, you know, the trenches of Tumblr, like those very early days. And I remember the, the whole like nothing tastes as good as skinny feels, a life or a moment on the lips, a lifetime on the hips, like the whole thin inspiration thing. And, like I remember back then, like I was a chubby kid and I remember seeing all ba- that back then in 2011. And I, I was like, well, you know what? I got, I got to get on board with this. I, I have to, like, I just remember being that age and thinking that stuff and being exposed to it back then. And I mean, so toxic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and like a lot of people like to just, you know, reserve this kind of conversation for girls and everything back then. And I've never, you know, struggled to the extent of it being dire or severe or anything. But I remember having probably what I would consider now to be toxic thoughts back then. I kept getting Twitter suggest me it's very early Tumblr. Me at that because I remember back on you now they would have like they have like the marriage thing with like the heart and it was kind of it's kind of similar. So it was it was similar, but I feel like you know TikTok's better. <laughs> it's, it won it won hands down. Okay, uh, I just want to say next question would be: Is it hard to make friends? Um, is it really hard to make friends, or because you feel like people want to use you for clout, or just in general it's hard for you? Oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean no, to no, I think that's it. I think because because there. I don't know, because sometimes I feel like it is hard for me to make friends. How do you feel about that? I, I definitely can get that because, you know, like, I guess, like, I always kind of want to, like, try to see the best in people. And I never want to, like, you know, just, like, assume people are bad. But I guess, like, at the same time, I've kind of had a lot of experiences with people where, like, either, like, they turn against you for, like, no reason. Um, they, they switch up. I, I've, like, listen, I've seen it happen. I, I know what it feels like when that happens to you, when people switch up or they turn against you. Like, I, I get it, you know. But do you feel comfortable talking about... Jacqueline Glenn. Yeah, it's fine. You know, I don't send any hate towards her or anything like that. Yeah. But so, so for the for the chat, for people who don't know, Jacqueline Glenn <laughs> is a friend or was a friend to Eugenia Cooney, and they were they were hanging out, and she was gonna meet some friends to go to an escape room, and when she got there, ja- Jacqueline Glenn organized a fifty one fifty hold on you. Our point in making that video was to explain that. Uh, Eugenia's mom is a dangerous person. She fought us on trying to get her help every single step of the way. We had to trick Eugenia into coming to my place so that we could help her. Her mom yelled at me, screamed at me, uh, tried to call the cops on me to have me arrested for kidnapping. Yeah, it was honestly like, what of the scary- And you know what? If, she, if what, she was like 24 or 25, I feel like ha- had Eugenia had more of an orthodox upbringing, um, something like that, probably would have happened um, sooner than the age of 24 or 25. I think that friends of hers probably, if Eugenia was going out and hanging out with people and not on such a short leash from Deb throughout her teenage years and her early 20s, I mean, it kind of sounds like some planning went into this from her end and everything. So, I mean, if Eugenia was out there doing more stuff with, friends and people and everything and wasn't just in that bedroom all the time then I mean I I think that that would have happened a lot sooner oh you did Michelle oh my well I I guess really the way you can maybe put a positive spin on it is you know maybe you you seem to be acknowledging that you've you know learned from it or you know just something like a dark part of your past and everything but but her mom would never let her have friends again. And that's kind of what we've been seeing. That's kind of what we've been seeing. Anytime that Eugenia goes out anywhere, it's always with Deb. She's always in the backseat of the car, always has to be on a short leash. I do not think that Eugenia would ever be allowed to have the opportunity again to do what she did back then with uh, Jacqueline. It's like, oh, hey, mom. I'm going to go hang out. We're going to, my friends and I are, we're going to do an escape room. I'll see you in a few hours. I don't know if that would fly. It's like, I don't know, like, would the attorney have to go with her? Like, would Deb have to go with her? I don't. At the time. Um, and it's weird, you know, like, um, I can kind of, I don't want to, like, you know, get too well, no, far. No, no, go ahead. But, like, what is, like, for the, because people are saying, like, what is 5150? Like, what would you, how do you define that? I think, basically, you know, like, when it was happening to me, 
um i didn't even know it was a thing like i had no idea i literally didn't even think that was like in the question that i was gonna go over there and that they were gonna do that like i literally just thought okay we're gonna go to an escape room and, and that's it and basically i don't know if you call like social services or if it's like some kind of government people yeah. like mental health people i don't even know but then i found out there's like these ladies there and um i was kind of like freaking out like i was i was so scared because i you know that's not what i thought i was getting into that yeah day. yeah it's almost like traumatizing because you think you're gonna go hang out with friends and then next thing you know you're you're getting a 5150 hold and something and then and th this is why i feel like when i when i watch you you always have like someone public school would have stepped in interesting Interesting. Public school would have done something. Teachers would have been talking. People administrate. So, I mean, this very blanketed term of I was being bullied back then. I'm not saying that she's lying. I'm not saying that she's lessening it. Very Eugenia very well may could have been bullied and ridiculed as, you know, millions of kids are in school and everything. But um, to the extent of public school intervening, do you know what I mean? That is an opportunity for a teenage person to be vulnerable by her peers and by people of the community. And if they see something going on, a lot of the time they'll ask themselves, well, what's going on at home? Well, what's, girl, you're showing up to school. Well, you know what? I, I think we need to take a look at what's going on at home. So I think that you have a good point when you said public school may have intervened. So if she was homeschooled or cyber schooled back then, which by the way, if she's two years older than me, I, w I remember I wanted to do cyber school when I was in ninth grade. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just open a laptop lid every day. That'd be awesome. But that was like in the very early years of cyber school, like cyber school really hadn't taken off yet. Um, so I, I, who knows, who knows, maybe there's something to that of, you know, this, of the whole like Eugenia doing cyber school or doing homeschooling back then, because it would get public administrators or teachers or whatever off of her back. Around you. So that way someone doesn't, I guess, try to trap you again or, or do that to you again, if that makes sense. Because I know that your your mom, you had called your mom and she was like, what is going on? And she was super supportive. And then, you know, I, I saw the, the other interviews you've done, the few that you have done, you haven't done many. And it seems like they were trying to paint your mom to be a person that she's not because she's always been like really next to you and helping you. So I think a lot of people don't know the real relationship you have. Like people in the chat, Eugenia has a mom, she has a father, he works in the city and like she's not by herself, if that makes sense, right? And so to see, to think that you are in some place with me. Why would he say that just now? That's really weird. I, I'm like kind of surprised that he said that about the dad working in New York City. Because that's, that's never really been discussed by her. Or I, I bet that she, I bet the lawyer, or, you know, Deb didn't really like that he just said that just now. Because they, they do not like um, Chip, the brother. They don't like Chip and they don't like the dad being discussed. Hmm. That was that's uh that was a peculiar little comment from uh Rich just now. Maybe like a jumpsuit on. I just think like wow. And you were there for how long? It was crazy. So you know, it's supposed to be like I think like a um like what is it like a 72 or like yeah like 72 hour hold or, or something uh, like that it feels like forever it's like and when you kind of get in those places um they just kind of treat you like you're crazy like anything you say they're kind of yeah, believe you they're not gonna believe you yeah i get what you're saying yeah, they're not gonna take it seriously and the place i was at like literally like right next door um there was like uh it was like a jail basically so yeah. there's just people you know not to judge like Jen, thank you so much for the super chat. School staff are mandated reporters. Yeah, I, I mean, I have some personal friends that are in that work in the school system as administrators, as teachers, and whatever. And you know, if it's if it's something you pick up on and, and you realize that it's you know affecting their school performance or just their overall health as a minor, it's something that you need to say and something that you need to report. So maybe there were some problems through K through 12 that were never brought up and never discussed about. And instead it was just kind of dismissed as this blanket term of, oh, the bullying was so bad. So I had to leave school. It, does it, listen, does that seem that far fetched? It doesn't to me. It does not to me. Anyone that's been to jail or anything like that. Like I know there's a lot of good people that, you know, end up coming out of jail and being good people. 
Um, but people were just like all like swearing at each other, like yelling things, like banging on walls, like. It could be really scary, I would assume. So scary. And we're all just kind of like in the same room. I, I think I was only there because I think like, at first my mom couldn't even like talk to me because it, that, that was already like established that like she's bad. Like, like she wasn't even allowed to like speak to me. Um, and then eventually somehow I was able to get them to kind of be like, like, oh, but even like when she was allowed to talk to me, it would be like for like a minute. I'd have to like stand behind like a line. And Whoa. yeah, like and that, and got, a lot of people don't know that. They don't know that about that that happened because you really don't speak about it in detail like that. Uh, anytime I do, I kind of just feel like people kind of. Well, probably because they didn't want Deb coaching her. Because honestly, if you're taking Eugenia away from Deb like that, if you, and you give 60 seconds to them to talk a little bit, what do you think is going to be said? What what do, what do you think is going to be said? Better shut your mouth. Better close your mouth. Don't say anything. You see what I mean? It's like, well, why would we give you guys the opportunity to talk like this if the whole reason for the 5150 is to do... Tell me that like, you know, I'm wrong. Um, I'm, I'm crazy. I deserve it. Like, um, so now I feel like because that happened to you, you got caught off guard, your friends, uh, they, I feel like not all help is good help. Sometimes that makes sense. Like, I mean, I, I say that cause I've seen people try to help and it just makes things worse. So if she was, if, and no hate to Jacqueline Glenn because she was in her mind, she thought she was. Oh my God, he is trying to be so careful with what he says. I mean, it, it's all coming out as garbage still in my opinion, but because this is a live interview and he knows how controversial this is going to be, he is trying to select his words very, very carefully. It's like, well, how do I make Jacqueline Glenn the bad guy, but not direct hate toward her? How do I stay on Eugenia's side but not make Jacqueline look like she did something like horrible. Like he, he's trying to walk the fence of so many different lines right now. And it's just coming across as so cringe. It, it just like leads you wonder. It's like, if you know that this is going to be a difficult conversation and you know, it's a conversation that you probably shouldn't be having. Why would you have taken this opportunity to do this interview? That's my question. If you knew that it was going to be cringe like this and very difficult to navigate, why would you do it? She's doing the right thing. She thought she was helping Eugenia. And maybe that wasn't the right way to go about it. But I'm not here to judge. But with that, because I don't want to send her any hate. Please do not send her any hate or anything like that. I, I just I just think because I've, I've known you so long on the internet. And I feel so sad that you were in that situation, like in like somewhat of a jail for oh, like hours and hours. Well, like forever, you know, once my mom kind of did get there, oh my gosh, Becky, you just gifted people like 30 subs. Oh, thank you, Erica. So much. That's crazy. Really appreciate it, Becky. Um, but oh my gosh, like they ended up releasing me from there like like a little bit early because my mom kind of got involved and then eventually like they, they did. But even just being there for like a, a day or two, like it feels like forever. Like yeah. it's it's really, I don't know, like it's, it's, it's very be scary. Because of that, I feel like it would be hard for you to trust people it was, it you was know like and then and then because your mom was involved i can now i relate to your mom when she's thinking like well is this person really a friend you know totally. so i i get that like my mom it's it's there's a lot of kind of weird things that happen because like she did kind of tell her off over the phone tell her off she told her off over the phone is that is that really how you want to phrase that I, uh, I see a lot of you guys in the chat, you're saying that it's for clout. It's like, you know, if you know that this is going to be a difficult interview, if you know that it's going to be difficult to select your words and navigate the conversation, why would you take the opportunity to do something like this? And a lot of you are saying clout. I just, I don't know. It's like as a content creator and as someone that wants to be, I don't know, viewed favorably. It's like no one, well, I, I, and I guess that that's maybe the concept that I have to wrap my head around. I, I just have to think maybe not everyone wants to be viewed favorably. Maybe some people want to be the villain. Maybe some people want to put off nasty energy and, you know, put themselves in gross so social circles to generate clicks and interactions. I, I just... I just don't even know how that would be positive from like a financial sense, because we know that all roads pretty much lead to money. We can all agree to that, right? In life, most most roads lead to money of, as to why people make decisions and everything. Um, I, I just don't know. It's like the longevity of your career as a social media creator. 
Like, do, do you really think that doing this is really going to paint you in a favorable light so that you can continue to make money in this profession 10 years from now? I, I guess, like, I, I'm just looking at it maybe a little bit long term. Because, yeah, in the moment, you know, this, this video may have gotten, like, 200,000 views. But let's talk about a year from now. Let's talk about two years from now. Let's talk about five years from now. People are going to look back and they're going to be like, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he was the one that did the interview with that one girl that used to be on social media. You see what I mean? Like, I just don't see, like, it just doesn't always make sense to me. It doesn't always make sense to me. Jacqueline is also a popular YouTuber. She's been on here for years. People were asking questions. Jeffrey enjoys being the villain. I could see that. I could see that. But I just feel like even... Even like four or five years ago when Jeffrey was like at the zenith of his career here on YouTube, like the makeup and, you know, like the halls and like him collabing with other people and everything like he was super, super, super popular here on YouTube. Was he playing the villain back then? I mean, I know that there were allegations and I know that he was problematic, but this is just so brazen to me. You know what I mean? This is so in your face. Trisha's been the good guy and the bad guy to make money. You think maybe because like social media's mindset has a very short term memory. It's like, well, you did something horrible in 2023, but now that it's 2024 and you're doing something new that we agree with and we like, we're going to give you money now that you're the good guy. Do, do you, do, maybe that's something to it, you know? Like the the psychology of like the masses in social media, because I do think that a lot of people have short term memory. <laughs> it's like, you know, if if I were to say, I mean, not, you know, I guess like a scenario or an example here is like if I said something really nasty right now that a lot of you didn't agree with and a lot of you, you know, changed your perception on me in this moment, say a year from now I come back on and I'm doing a hilarious live stream for charity. It, would, would that drown out what I, you know, not for everyone, definitely not for everyone. But do you think that there's some people with the go, oh, 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 Lordy, it's Jordy. I like him. You see what I mean? So maybe you have a point with that. Even negative engagement is engagement on YouTube. Thumbs down and comments, pro or con, cha-ching. Yeah, I think that you make a good point, Jen. Thanks so much for the super chat. Jeffrey wants attention for the palette. They prove it in the next exclusive interview. You know what, Merrick? I did see that being said. Oh, gosh. I, You know what, guys? We have to find this link. Because apparently after this interview and everything, and after he took heat for this and everything, um, he went live and tried to like give a disclaimer or resolve some of the arguments that were being said after this happened. And apparently something was said about all of this being for the new Jeffrey makeup palette. I would love to see that VOD. I need to see that clip if anyone has it. Greetings from the Netherlands. Hello. Hey, X. Um, just because, like, you know, she thinks I'm coming home later. She wasn't expecting that I was going to end up there. Um, and she was not, like, happy about it, like, like at all. Um, there's some things that were said that weren't true. Like, there was another person that is, like, one of Jacqueline's friends that claim that she said she's like a, i don't know if i should say your name or not um, um I, I would not say their name but you could just through. well we'll we'll just we'll call them uh like monica what's the yeah, same monica yeah so she's like another person on youtube and she claimed that my mom said all this crazy stuff and sent jacqueline like voicemails and none of that was ever true because my mom doesn't even have jacqueline's number so i'm like what are people talking about like i'm so confused okay oh my gosh becky thank you so thank much thank you guys for all the love in the, in the chat and so, and so that, that's why i feel like it's hard for you to trust people and yeah. and then also your family allowing you to welcome people in your circle that's so true like after that my mom was kind of like oh my gosh eugenia you can't trust anyone like literally like um she's like you have to be like super careful i mean we knew it hey we all knew it but she said it she just said it we all knew that that's what was going on, but she just verified it for us. Eugenia, you can't trust anybody. You need to keep your social circle small. Mm. Mm. I, I mean, it's like, at what was she, 25? At, at 25, do you think that a mom should be telling their child, child, their daughter, 
you know, who, who, and who they, who they shouldn't be and who they shouldn't be. I, I mean, yeah, but that was probably something that you should have done at age 12, not 25. She slipped. Mm. Oh, you, th you guys think that that wasn't on purpose. Not going to get help from Deb, so maybe Jeffrey wants the redemption arc. How would that work, Vanessa? A redemption arc? I Because in all, all of this, I, I don't see where that path would lead of to redemption for Jeffrey. Or do you, do you even think that Jeffrey wants or needs redeeming? Look what happened with Gypsy Rose. You shouldn't trust anyone, girl. That's so toxic. Yeah, I, I mean, it's like I, I could see maybe a parent intervening and telling their 12 year old. It's like, hey, the neighborhood kids were mean to you during kickball. I don't want you going around them anymore, sweetheart. She's 25. You, you can't be hanging out with. Like, girl, cut the cord. Deb is Eugenia's worst enemy. She's not protecting her daughter. It's all about the money. I think Jeffrey has Deb wrapped around his finger. Mm, you think Je now that would be interesting. Could you could you picture being a fly on the wall for that conversation between Jeffrey Star and Deb Cooney? <laughs> what is said between the two of those people? Oh my gosh. Oh my. Oh my. Did she just say her mom told Jacqueline off? Now she says that she doesn't have her number. If she did say that, I didn't catch it. He doesn't care to be redeemed. He knows that he can't be canceled. But I guess, like, what makes people think that they can be uncancelable? Because you know what? You know who I think thought that they were uncancelable, and then I think it's fine. I don't. I don't know if it's one hundred percent in the bag yet, but I think that people are leaning toward the cancellation being permanent. I think that James Charles is on the verge of being permanently canceled. It's taken a lot. It's taken a lot of time. It's taken a lot of people coming forward and everything. But maybe he thought that he was one of those people that thought, <laughs> I can't be canceled. I'm YouTube's sweetheart. I, I do makeup and I make people laugh. I brighten people's days. You can't cancel me. I have I have tens of millions of dollars. You can't. Mm. James has been over. I don't know, guys. I I mean, we we would like to think that we would like that he's pers like permanently canceled and everything. I think I think it definitely is leaning that way. It's a lot. I'm a lot more confident in saying that than I had been maybe like a year or two ago. But it's um, it's definitely leaning that way predatory paint <laughs> predatory paint and i was feeling like that myself kind of like for a while like anyone i would like talk to i'd be like you're not like gonna you know yeah. do this to me right or you're not gonna like tell her and um you know do anything like 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 that i, I was just kind of like like paranoid about like everybody i guess Yo, I i'm gonna i'm too. gonna jump forward a little bit because yeah. you you had like your the some commissioners in your state or something yeah. contact you or social workers contact you and this yeah. is recent this is recent guys right here because yeah. I saw you, you were in a, you were in like a car driving there. You took a photo and you're like on the way to go something. Exactly. You... Like they were like a mobile crisis team, like the most recent okay. ones anyway. Because there's kind of always people making like these like crazy calls. Um, so these ones actually came to my house. You got a mobile crisis team come to your house. Yeah. Okay. So with with that being said, I think it's starting to get a little wild in in here. So let's switch over to sub mode. It sounds good. All right, guys, we're gonna go into sub mode for a bit. So. Um, big thank you again, everyone that's been subscribing today, guys. Big thank you to Becky. Becky, I think you gifted like 40 people or something. That is so crazy. Mm -hmm. I All right, you know what? It's getting a little bit wild in here. So if you guys want to speak the truth and tell me off, you're going to have to pay to do it. <laughs> that's what that translates to. Kelly, hey, thanks so much. Deb screaming, I want the money during... Oh, you talking about the one when she was doing her hair, that video? I, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's really what it sounded like. That is definitely what it sounded like. His new makeup is called Painted of All Things. Inappropriate Ink by James Charles. I have not watched James Charles on his channel. Uh, oh, I can't tell you. I cannot tell you how long. 
I mean, I, I still might have, uh, I actually should go unsubscribe. I don't know if I'm still subscribed to this channel or not. Don't cancel me. It was a mistake. I just don't look at it that often. <laughs> who is James Car <laughs> Carls? Who is James Charles? Oh my, you don't know who James Charles is? Uh, snap, yes, it did not miss alive. Hey, Kimmy. Am I married? No. You so much. Yes, Becky, you are such an MVP. MVP Becky in the chat, guys. <laughs> and okay. always, guys. Put the rich emotes in there, by the way, <laughs> subscribers. All right, so we left off when you were talking about a mobile crisis team. Did, when was it, like last week? Yes, it was actually just, I think, like a few days ago. But do you know why? Do you know why I think they came now? It's because you posted this video and it went it went viral. I mean, how, was it 50-something million views now it has? The Beyonce one? Or the well, Selena. I think the Selena one got more views than Beyonce, if, if I'm right. Let me pull it up here. Cause so, so first of all, for you guys to know, this is what I think really triggered the mobile crisis team to come over. Because Eugenia Cooney posted this video on her on her TikTok, and it got a lot of attention. So it's sitting at 76.5 million views. And so this is what she's doing, right? So here's Eugenia, right? She's dancing and she's smiling. She's dancing and smiling. And I feel that people reported you, because this got 76 million views, because they were like, this is so shocking, oh my God. Yeah. So, so they called the commissioner to come to your, a mobile crisis team to come to your house, if that makes sense. So, and I think this is, I think this is what, what it was. I think it was that video that made it happen. But that's my opinion, I have no receipt, I just, I'm just. I kind of agree, I, I definitely kind of agree, Rich. Thank you, Holly, for subbing. Thank you guys all so much. Um, Because like, I don't know, like since then, there's kind of been like two, like these like news outlets and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good to see you. Hi, Taylor. Thank you for the galaxy. Um, so yeah, it's like, I kind of think like probably, you know, some people see that video and then some of them just kind of yeah. do these crazy things. Like I had to actually talk to them again today, just on the phone this time, not like in person, but. Um... So they're following up with you. She keeps doing this or I don't even know, like this or whatever she keeps doing with her hand to make the heart thing is because I think when you do like a, a TikTok live stream or whatever, the more people um, like give your stream like a heart or a double tap or a like or whatever, the more it gets, you know, put out into the algorithm. So more people get notified to it. So every time that she's she's doing this, she's telling people to like the stream so it gets more engagement and more views and more money, essentially. Nicole, thank you so much for the super sticker. High five to you. Dancing and smiling. Are those new glasses? No, they're maybe like, I maybe got them like a year ago. Um, I think it's, I think it's real, Jessica. I think it's real hair. Yeah, kind of following up with me. And they were just kind of like um, telling me, like, I guess people are trying to call like senators and do crazy things like that. So that's why, you know, they just want me to know, like, yeah, that's why like we have to because there's people really going far with this. Like they're trying to like, like, like be like, how can you let this girl like not? Like well, yeah, because that's not the first time because I've there have been petitions to take you off of YouTube. Oh, yeah. It's you know, and I, I saw I remember that. And, and there's there was we have so much girl. There's so, it's just a, there's a whole lore behind Eugenia. So. <laughs> So when the, when the mobile crisis team came over, did they knock on the door? Um, you know, they, like, before they came, one of the guys, like, he kind of called me, like, two days before. Because um, they, like, it's not, like, the first time. There was, like, there's been, like, other times where, like, they just kind of, like, showed up. Um, like, there was another time, like, I don't know how long ago. Maybe it was, like, I don't know, a month or two ago. And I actually wasn't there. Like, my mom was there. And mm -hmm. she was just kind of telling me, like, she she sometimes gets a little bit, like, scared with this stuff. So she's like, yeah, there's, like, these two people. They came. They're from, like, the crisis team. They said... Uh, you guys keep saying he's checked out. And I, I, I completely see it, too. I mean, I said that in the very beginning of the interview. I mean, she had literally, quite literally just started talking, and he's already texting. I, I mean... It's like one thing for me because I, I'm live streaming right now, right? A portion of what I'm doing here is interacting and talking with you guys. He's doing a one-on-one -on -one interview. It's like, what else is more important than what you're doing right now? You're not talking to the chat. You should have prepared for this. You, you should know what you're going to ask her. You, it's like, what what is so important that isn't her right now? <laughs> 
you have to call them back. Like, I hope it's like nothing bad. And I was like, oh, okay, I hope not too. Um, and then I called him and the guy was like nice and everything. He just kind of, I guess, like told me like how they're getting all these calls and they have to like make sure things are okay. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, okay, well, you know, probably won't be the last time. Um, yeah, I, I think, I think the, even the local police know oh, when yeah, they, they know me now. Like, yeah. Well, lo Cause the local police know Eugenia cause people call the police and they're like, we have another call about Eugenia. So like, this is not just a girl who's on TikTok and people are like, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm, someone needs to say something. Like there are multiple people who have checked in on you, you know? And then like, I've had real conversations with you off camera and like, she's fine. Like if you look at her, if you look at her TikToks, right? You see her dancing and smiling. You have, she's been 5150. She, without her even. Oh, see, that's the first time I've heard it. I mean, He's implying it. He's on her side. He's basically saying it without saying it. But just then, I think that that's the first time I've ever heard him say it. She's fine. Let's listen to that again. And I actually wasn't there. Like, my mom was there. And she was just kind of telling me, like, she she sometimes gets a little bit, like, scared with this stuff. So she's like, yeah, there's, like, these two people. They came. They're from, like, the crisis team. They said, you have to call them back. Like, I hope it's, like, nothing bad. And I was like, oh, okay. I hope not, too. Um, and then I called him. And the guy was, like, nice and everything. He just kind of, I guess, like, told me, like, how they're getting all these calls. And they have to, like, make sure things are okay. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, okay, well, you know, probably won't be the last time. Um, okay. Yeah, I, I think, I think the, even the local police know. Oh, yeah, when they, they know me now. Like, yeah, because well, the, lo the local police know Eugenia because people call the police and they're like, we have another call about Eugenia. So like, this is not just a girl who's on TikTok and people are like, oh my God, this is crazy. I'm, someone needs to say something. Like there are multiple people who have checked in on you, you know? And then like, I've had real conversations with you off camera and like, she's fine. Like if you look at her, if you look at her TikToks, right? You see her dancing and smiling. You have, she's been 5150. So because someone is dancing and smiling in a TikTok video, they're okay. Weird hill to die on, my dude. Weird hill to die on. I do not understand this at all. I just, I'm speechless. I mean, you guys see my expression right now. This is how I, I genuinely feel after hearing him say, she's dancing and smiling. She's doing this. She's fine. It's like, I, I don't know. Am I ga am I being gaslit or are you just an idiot? I, I Paige, thanks so much. Has she always slurped like that when she talks? It's so distracting. I'll have to keep an ear out for that. I'm not sure what you mean, but thank you so much for the donation. Oh God. It's I it's just Sir Squawks a lot. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Thanks for being here. Wonder if she's uh, paying him to do. That's why he's acting. Oh, that it, it, again. What like I said earlier, Brandon. A lot of things in life are controlled by money. All roads lead to money. If you can't explain someone's behavior, it, it's like, well, <laughs> who knows? Maybe maybe a check's being written somewhere. Uh, if this is like some type of weird, twisted PR, I'm not sure. Michelle, hey. Um, we don't do this with other professions with higher life-threatening potential. This is how she makes her money. I don't know. I struggle with it. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely see your point. I, I know that a lot of people say that. It's like, you know, the other side of things. It's like, well, something such as what this is, you know, being talked about and discussed on here. Not everyone raises alarm and, you know, puts so much emotion and cares so much about it when it is something else equally as dangerous. So it's like, why is that? So I don't know. I guess it's just um, that's like a psychology kind of thing. It's like a social media thing. It's just like when when you see something online, such as Eugenia dancing to single ladies, it's like, well, you know, why is this so alarming to me? Why is this really making me feel a lot of things? But when I see something else, it's like, well, you know, it's, I see what you mean. I know you definitely have a point, Michelle, but I don't think that that, you know, necessarily diminishes what is going on i mean people still people should you're, you're very right people should be caring about other situations that are life-threatening potential like this but i don't it's it's kind of like when you see a homeless person on the side of the road and you see the dog it, it's like well I, I feel bad for that dog oh look they have a dog maybe i should give them money 
It's like, well, you see someone passed out on the side of the road and you see a dog. So that's what makes you feel bad for him. It's like, you should feel bad for him because this is another human struggling. It's, it's just, Hey, Hey, you know what? I don't think that there's any one right answer to that, but you definitely bring up an interesting concept. Uh, conspiracy of everything. Hey there, I've been hooked on your videos for the past week. Glad I finally caught a live stream. Love your content. Thanks so much. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the donation. Glad you're enjoying. This guy's a whole bag of fake. And that's just what I mean, you guys. It's just like, it's one thing to play the villain. It's one thing to make money off of it. But what he's doing in this interview just makes him look so silly. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I can't wrap my head around it fully. If this wasn't a cash cow, she wouldn't have been committed. Mm. That's, that's another point to it. That's another point to it. I see them gift each other all day. It's just frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> Appeasing and normalizing all of this. What do you think she thinks in the back of her head? Um, it's a very vague question, Sir Squawks a lot. Um, I think at the root of this, in the back of her head and everything, it is a lot of um, delusion and mis guiding miss like a misguiding lifestyle because of the influences she has on her life but i think that the golden motto to keep in mind with all of this is that this is in a lot of ways not her fault in a lot of ways this is because this is a condition this is because this is a you know some type of something that is going on within her psyche so I think that that is important for everyone to keep in mind, you know, when you want to point the finger at Eugenia and you want to say this and everything, it's just like, there is a portion to this where you have to take a moment, step back and say, we need to understand what we're doing. We need to understand what we're talking about here. We need to understand the condition. Uh, Chantal Marie. <laughs> Hey, Chantal Marie. Uh, you're my favorite YouTuber. I'm so glad I caught your live. Your content's amazing. Thanks for keeping me in the loop. I adore the Jordy. Oh, well, thank you so much, Chantal. Th that's funny, though. Like, is your name actually Chantal Marie? <laughs> because there's another creator on here that, like, I, I wasn't sure if, like, you're making a joke out of it. But, like, if that's actually your name, <laughs> that's, that's a funny coincidence. Because there's another uh, creator on here that I make videos about. Her name's Foodie Beauty, and her name is your name. <laughs> You're so sad. It's also toxic. It's the disease process here. Yeah. Um, yeah, right, natural. Without her even like, you know, it was like a trap. And then you have local authorities coming to your house, calling you on top of that. And then you get pizza sent to your house and you get diapers sent to your house. Yeah, that's like a whole other thing. It's like the diapers. It's like... And, and so and at what point it's like, that's just, and I understand that people are concerned. Oh my gosh, Sarah, thank you with the cuddles. Did I ever tell you I got like baby formula? No! Yeah, they literally sent me baby formula in the mail. <laughs> I'm like, what? Isn't there like a baby formula? And, like and I've seen it all. Like people will say like, Eugenia is wearing a wig. You remember they always say that, that it's yeah. not her hair. And so, and so, and it's almost interesting to see people like, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to pick up the phone and say, hey, can you check on this girl? look at her social media and they look at it and you're dancing and smiling and then they're like okay well let me go check on her and they're like yeah i'm fine i'm right here uh, it's, it's like crazy like oh yeah sorry to cut you off no 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 <laughs> I, I just i just feel like if something were to happen like let's say you if you people are saying did you need help i think that you would have gotten it because you do have like you it's it's not just the internet people because i see in the chat so and so and they no no See, and it's when I hear him, when I hear him say things like that, it's like, dude, are you this stupid or are you gaslighting? I, I don't get it. I think, guys, I think that if it was actually a problem, something would have been done by now. Come on. Everybody used their head. I think if something was actually as dire as you guys are making it out to be, something would have been intervened. No, no. And that's like why people are so emotional about this. Like, I just, oh, God, it, it, it does. It makes you frustrated. It makes you very frustrated. 
Hey, Granny Days. I uh, love your content. Who is this guy interviewing her? Was this on TikTok? I've literally, ne I've literally never seen him before. Um, he's another YouTuber. He's also popular on uh, TikTok. He's his name is Rich Lux, and basically, like, what goes around with all of this is like he's friends with um, Jeffrey Star and some other people, and they all are. Um, as of lately, they've been really in Eugenia's sphere of influence. So that's basically who he is. How is he talking about this necessary? I mean, geez. Oh, gosh. How's my day going, Sarah? It's going well. Thanks for being here. Uh, all the Eugenia videos this week. Hey, Dana. Um, Dina, Dana, sorry. Uh, somehow survived, and I feel like I went through the same journey of figuring her and Deb out. It, it it's honestly it, it's been a journey for me like i've i've maybe only been covering eugenia maybe like five or six months now and i definitely thought that i had it all figured out at first like if you watch my first ever reaction to eugenia like i'm pretty sure of myself it's like okay well i know exactly what's going on like i, I understand the dynamic and some of that had some truth to it everything but i feel like it's when you dive a little bit deeper and you start to like understand what's going on and the influences and the externals out there such as like her friends and family and what they're doing and saying and everything it's like oh god there's there's a whole nother layer to this uh why does he have paper around his eyes that's makeup i think that this is like his just like this is not what he does like he wears a crown and like makeup like this to look like a joker or like some like it's not paper well so and so enable but like you have a group of people around you in real life and like like go touch some grass like in real life like your mom your dad i think i don't know if you have a brother or something and and out there and so you have like people around you you know or yeah. sister i don't know so and then what really what i got upset about is that eugenia has a pet dog named buzz yes and what what happened to buzz okay so there was like a while ago um and this is like insane because like like literally like we we, we love our dog and we love animals so much and like we, we love dogs so there was somebody they literally called like the animal control center i think that's what they're called like like this was like kind of a while ago oh v baby thank you so much um and they literally said that we we're like abusing our dog um it's like crazy i mean buzz like it's it's hard to believe because he has like a lot of energy and like he's he'll act like a puppy but like our vet explained to us that um like, first of all, like, sometimes his nails get kind of long, um, but it, they said if, like, we cut them too short, it, it could be, like, harmful to him. So we just kind of go by what our vet says, and that sometimes his nose gets kind of dry. Um, but they told us, like, with pugs, because pugs will have, like, kind of, like, some breathing issues and stuff, kind of because of, like, you know, they have kind of, like, squished faces. And that that's, like, it's, like, normal, especially when pugs are, like, older. So <laughs> it's, like, yeah, guys, anytime Buzz is, like, at all sick, Mama J, I love you so much. Thank you. Or like there seems like there's anything wrong with him like he's like immediately taken to like the vet i know and it's like really was was TikTok the the best place to do this interview i, I mean it's like we're talking about very heavy serious topics right here and like she'll be in the middle of talking about something and like a, a cowboy hat and mustache will pop up on her it, it's just <laughs> it's just like, like i don't know like it's just was this maybe the best place to do this? I mean, Rich, if you're going to be preoccupied with reading the chat the whole time and there's going to be like animations popping up on the screen and she's going to be talking about some of the most traumatic experiences of her life while like a unicorn horn is popping up on her head. Like, is this really? <laughs> you see what I like? So people, and it was crazy when they came over, they were actually really nice. Like they were like, oh, wow, you know, we're really surprised we were called in for such a well-taken-care-of dog. Um, but it's, like, it's scary because it's, like, imagine, like, if they did take away our dog, like, that would have been, like, horrible. And I don't think they would because I think, like, you know, they have to, like, actually, like, look at things. But you never know. Like, I'll tell you with, like, the 5150 thing, like, everything they were saying, like, like they, they'll, they would say something different, but they were literally saying, like, so many things that, like, weren't true with my family and with a lot of things. But it was kind of, like, four against one, you know? So it's, like, they're not going to listen to me. Like, I get what you're saying. And so then I guess they would talk, they had to talk to your family, too. They, oh, the, the 5150 or the dog people? Sorry. I would say in, bo in, in both those situations, did they speak oh, no. to them? With the no? 5150, they were just like, oh, cool. like, can I, like, you guys can talk to someone or, you know, I can, like, do what I got to do. I really don't want to go. They were just like, we're making the decision and, like, we'll, we'll like, we'll, like, you know, we're figuring it out. Um, and yeah. they were like, nope, not happening. Basically, like your friend, your friends said this. 
<laughs> so um, after you got out of 5150 hold uh, and then a couple i guess a couple of weeks passed by you met with shane dawson to shoot the the video you did a video with shane dawson and it, it sits at 32 million views i think i texted you yeah i'm so nice about it i was like maybe i shouldn't have done that no no, but, no i appreciated it but when you see that are you like still figuring out who that person is because you've looked a certain way for so long and now you're changing you know i mean i guess like for me sometimes i do find like i can be kind of like critical of myself um I look really bad here. This is just one where I'm like, like, there are like any makeup there? I don't know. I guess I've never really had like the highest self-esteem, which, you know, I'm trying to like work on and stuff. You know, I think it is like really good though that like I did make that decision to um, get myself back to like a healthy place and to like do what is like what I should be doing. And You know, what was the wild part about that interview is like, it's not like Eugenia went away for six months. It's not like Eugenia went away for a year. Wasn't she gone 28 days or, or like just under a month? I, I, I'm I sorry, but like if this is something that has affected you your entire life, I don't think that it's something that you get over and become a master of and you're ready to provide an interview talking about your experience after 28 days. Um, But again, I mean... You know, <sighs> Shane wanted to make that interview, but uh, what do you guys think about that therapist? I don't know if they're going to show her, but like the blonde haired woman, remember the therapist that was like coaching Shane throughout all of this? I mean, it's like really like as a therapist, do you really think that that was maybe the best idea to do so soon after this kind of treatment took place? Because there's going to be, I'm sure even on this video, I'm sure yeah. there's going to be a lot of comments about you look so great. And then kind of comparing it to the last time they saw you, a particular video, right, yeah. to now. And then are you prepared for that? I guess it's... I guess it kind of is like an adjustment, like seeing like what people will say and like seeing those comments. And to try to like view it as a good thing. That like they're trying to like, you know, make positive comments towards you. And yeah. I know. Yeah, I know that she was gone off of social media for a long time. But like how long was she actually in something i don't like that lady she was not on social media for about seven months so was it was it more of a break from social media or was it her in all i figured out was how messed up it all is kai is the one who helped jacqueline set this all up katie Oh, hey, Nancy, you, if Eugenia's house went south, would there be a bunch of finger pointing or who would be held accountable? Um, I think that they would just say, oh, I mean, like if it did, you know, are you talking about like the people like Rich and everybody else? I think that it would just kind of be like, well, you know, we cared about her. We were there for her. We were her friends, you know, and I've also heard Jeffrey say something along the lines of, well, you know, guys, if we didn't. If we didn't laugh about it, if we didn't have fun with her, if we didn't make light of this, then we would all just cry all the time. And who wants to do that? If that makes sense. <laughs> and he came to your house and visited you and y'all hung out. And that was like really nice because that was kind of how I got to like know Shane better. And Shane, like I, you know, can never say enough good things about him. And he's someone that, you know, I kind of felt like when I met him, like he was someone that was like really genuine and actually like a good friend and it's like you know i guess like sometimes like i'll always kind of get like a little bit like especially out of that situation i was kind of so nervous to like talk to like anyone because i was just like oh i don't want people to like ever do that again sorry to kind of go back there no, no, you're fine. Like, no but so um, it's the shane, the shane dawson video he he said that he really wanted to be respectful and he really like he really like showed videos he because did you watch it because sometimes i can't watch stuff i'm in did you actually watch it sometimes like when i watch myself i kind of like cringe but i i did though like when you was like gonna watch for shane and, you know and so in, what i found interesting because i learned i learned some stuff about you watching that documentary you were in with shane dawson oh. and he said like you know people always bring up your how you look physically and he, he said she never she never talks about like, you never talk about that like you just you kind of just sit here you do your thing you vibe out and then that's always the main topic in the comments and and i was just like that's right because you have other creators i'm not gonna say their name oh, yeah. who they they talk about what they look like and then you you have eugenia who doesn't address it at all and i was like that's so true like she doesn't talk about it 
And so when I first came across you, well, you don't always have to use words to display and communicate something on social media. I think that lip syncing to single ladies in a very showy outfit like that, I think that, that communicates a lot without having to use words. Just because you don't out and out say something um, doesn't mean that it can't be perceived or picked up on by a group of people. Um, this this is kind of telling me that he thinks that people are stupid, that some people are stupid. It's like, dude, like just because she's not out here saying it verbatim, I, I mean, what do you think that her dancing around in a Selena outfit like that conveys? Uh, I was like, well, if she's not talking about it. It makes it makes me feel kind of uncomfortable to even bring it up, you know. So that's why I was just been respectful, and because I was like, well, she's not talking about it, then you know. And I think when Shane did his documentary, he talked about you. Momo, thanks so much for the super sticker. Thanks for being here, Momo. Do you think she'll watch this live stream? I, I mean, how long have I been live? Like an hour and a half? Probably not. I mean, like maybe bits and pieces of it. I could see, I could see, I could see Deb watching this whole thing, like on an iPad in her living room. <laughs> Hi, Deb. Coming out of that, the fifty-one fifty thing, and it, it really left the audience like relating with you more and getting to know you more because we saw you in a way we've never saw you before in that film. You know, I think Shane, like, he does such an amazing job with, like, with all his documentaries and can kind of, like, really show, like, a different yeah. side of people. Um, so so I, I feel like if you guys haven't seen the documentary with Eugenia Cooney, check it out. It's on YouTube. Uh, it's, what's, what's it called again? I forgot, I forgot the name of it. It's, it's just, just type in Shane Dawson, Eugenia Cooney. It's, like, a really long documentary. And, you know, he basically lets us into the world of Eugenia Cooney. And I was, like, I left that documentary feeling like, wow, this girl has been, in my opinion, like, tormented online. And and yeah. got so many negative comments, oh, and yeah. and and you're, it's just, it's a very difficult, delicate thing to talk about. But I'm just like, you know, I left just loving you and not hating you, you know. And that's the thing. Like, if you ever want someone to get help, don't never send negative comments. Just show them love and support because it's not going to do anything by sending hate. That's my opinion. Insane. Like, I think if anything, it just kind of like makes people feel worse, you know. And then it's like kind of like if I ever say that, then it's like everyone just says that I'm I'm gaslighting people. Like, yeah. I've, 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 comment, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just like, guys, like, I'm not trying to, like, tell you guys how to feel. Uh, I, I, I mean, Eugenia, you have and do gaslight people, though. I mean, you have quite literally said word for word on here, what is wrong with you guys? What are you talking about? I, I don't know how much closer to the definition of gaslighting we can get to. I or anything like that i'm just kind of like i still think it really does any good to just kind of go and be mean to other people and you know just kind of some yeah. people go to like very very far extents and and you know what I, I mean i guess that she has a point here there is no point in going to her live streams and blaring obscenities or saying out and out just nasty stuff or mailing baby formula to her house i do definitely agree with that but don't don't lump those people in with the people that are actually providing support, sympathy, criticism, etc. I'm saying, like, do, don't put me on the same level as someone that mailed you a bulk order of baby formula or diapers. You know, it's like, don't put all of this into that one blanket term of haters, because that's what they like to do. It's like there are people out there that are actually trying to say something and have a conversation. And it's like, well, ugh haters it's like oh god it's like jordy and all those people that send baby formula it's like don't group us uh-uh what exactly does she think that she's famous for well i mean i don't know uh yeah why, why are you being crazy people say i gaslight everybody what is wrong with you? Why would you say that? <laughs> oh my God. It's like, if anything, I just kind of think that's like more stressful on people. Yeah. And I, I get the blunt end of it too. Like just even doing this interview with you, people are so upset. They're angry. They're like, Rich, how, how dare you give her a platform? And I get the same thing. Like uh, even with Shane Dawson, when I did collaborations with him, I got the same negative comments. When I- How dare he give her a platform? I don't think anybody's saying that. 
I mean, I'll tell y'all this. I knew you. I knew of Eugenia Cooney a lot sooner before I knew of this dude. <laughs> How dare you give her a platform? I, I, <laughs> I think it is blatantly the other way around. Associate with Jeffree Star, I get the same negative comments, and it's like if I talk about their favorite their favorite influencers, I get the same negative comments. So like, it's hard for me to make friends too because it's like. Oh my God, Rich is so controversial. You can't be his friend and stuff like that. And I'm just, just like, girl, give them multiple chances. And, and like, I love people like you, Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, and just people who just beat at their own drum. Like, I just, I love it. And it's part of like who I am at a core because we're both, I would consider it like scene kids in a sense, like the Rich? whole style. There you go. Wait, what happened? Uh, God, what, I mean, oh no, Rich. Okay, because someone... that was like, no, I was like, I'm going to agree with everything. I was like, this is such a bad time for- Did anyone just hear what he said? I mean, we were all listening, but did you hear what he said? I like people that march to the beat of their own drum. I feel like at a core, we're all the same because we're like scene kids. I, I mean, it, it, you guys might be right. I, I mean, as, as before, like I was talking about like this all being for money, this all being for clout. And this dude might just be an idiot. I, I just, I, I just like, I guess the thing that I wrap my head around is... Having such a large following on social media, having hundreds of thousands of subscribers, having all eyes on you and everything, I just thought that it would take a little bit more intellect from someone to achieve that status here on social media. So it's like when I see people with this kind of platform say these kinds of things, I'm like, there must be an ulterior motive because clearly this person isn't an idiot because they're so successful on social media. But maybe that's stupid of me to equate success on social media with someone having, you know, the wherewithal to think about things correctly in life. <laughs> I, yeah, he's an idiot. This is ridiculous. This is all for clout chasing. He's really, really, really dumb. People purposely trying to be delusional. I, I, I know. It's just like when I see, it's like you're you're being so wrong about something. I I don't, it's like there must be a reason for it. It's like, okay, like I understand you're being delusional, but why? And it's like, well, no, it's, it's, it, there's no why, George. It's just because that they're. <laughs> We're just like, stop, you're back. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. But I was just saying, like, because your style is very much like a scene kids type of style. <laughs> yes, and I, and I was going to say, I agree with everything you were saying, Rich. And honestly, like, I think people like you and, and, and Jeffrey and Shane um, are honestly, like, some of the nicest people I've talked to online. And, like, you know, literally some of my favorite people in the world. So it makes me, like, sad, too. And that's saying something. That's saying something. If Jeffree Star, Rich Lux, and Shane Dawson are some of the nicest people that you've ever met, I don't think you've met a lot of nice people. <laughs> or just a lot of people in general. Ugh. Oh, my. You just kind of, like, you know, seeing that. Is she sped up? I have it sped up just a little bit. I have it on 1.25. I feel like just like a lot of people get kind of like misunderstood online. Thank you for the subscription, Nancy. And um, I just kind of feel like sometimes people are way too fast to like judge someone. Yes, and Paul, you guys, 100%. Yes. I already know. The Paul Dow dynasty. I love Paul Dow, yes. And it's just like, I don't know. I just kind of think like sometimes people shouldn't just like blindly just like believe some of like the terrible things that people say about them on the internet and actually like you know, get to know somebody before, like, you just decide that you, like, hate them. And I always feel bad, too, for, like, people like you that are, like, so nice and have been really good friends. And then people, like, attack you just for, like, you know, being nice to me or call you an enabler. And I'm, like, I, I, I like, <laughs> never want to, like, cause that for anyone. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I always feel so bad about that. But, but you have to be strong because, you know, if a normal people would break, you know, and they would be like, okay, Eugenia, I can't be your friend. I get so many negative comments. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's like... No, girl. Like I, I know. Like I said, I know Eugenia Cooney. She's been very sweet, nothing but kind. Like literally one of the kindest souls out there. Like she, she's quirky. She has her own vibe going. She's always like, I don't want to offend. 
a lot of people, once they started to involve themselves with Eugenia Cooney, would find themselves at a crossroads between either siding with her or going against popular opinion. And a lot of people would cave to popular opinion is basically what he just said. Okay, Rich, let me ask you this. So if Eugenia didn't have a platform of over 2 million people and bring in an influx of tens of thousands of subscribers to your stream, would you continue to be friends with her? Would you continue to talk about her? Would you continue to do interviews with her like this? If this was just some ordinary girl? Hmm? Hmm? I, I, I mean, I, I don't think that that's the reason why. I, I don't think that you're going against the grain and doing what's right, or you're a, a lone wolf in, you know, a room full of wrong voices or something. Like, Dondi, hey there! I think he uses her to be closer associated with Jeffrey. Hmm. I mean, really, I mean, the more you guys talk about this, the more that you say it, the more it makes sense. I mean, this is all just some, like, so it is. It's like an MLM. This is like some type of pyramid scheme, some type of social climbing. It's weird. And, and like, like it's the whole vibe. She's a very nice person off camera and on camera. And to, to see you get such an amount of negative comments, it really hurts. Because when you look at it, you really haven't, like, like, there are people that I have came after Okay, yeah, blame me. Yeah, I get it, you know? But like you, you never come after anybody, I you know? To, like, I really don't try to be mean to anyone or start, like, issues. Like, I, I just try to be nice to people and I don't know, but it seems like just like a lot of people, they just mm -hmm. always think I'm like the devil here, basically. <laughs> so, so how'd you get into like the scene kid, like the goth style, like the fashion, avant-garde, like that whole thing? I've always just like really liked that kind of fashion like that and then there's been a few instances where it just kind of happens and then I always feel so stupid I'm like oh my gosh like why am I doing this and I guess like there's been a few moments where it just kind of became like a lot or you know um and it's usually just over it's been over like such like, like stupid things yeah like I've always been, I've always been drawn to people who are like just so different um like Amanda Lepore is one of them like they're just so different and they're they usually run in like the the club circuit the scene kid the whole club kid lifestyle like I've always just naturally just so then we have let's talk about one of your biggest biggest online to my my opinion one of your biggest online haters right okay. um there's a couple in mind <laughs> kelly ray ray thank you so um, and, and again if you don't want to talk about this just say no comment oh. so we're getting into and i'm gonna say the name onision oh yeah he was kind of uh. like the start that's like <laughs> the eugenia so, hey i'm eugenia Kenny, and i'm doing a cooking show but first i'm gonna eat something on camera to prove to you guys that i do eat there are some cucumbers are you ready for me to prove you guys wrong freely the banana girl in onision <sighs> mm, i love cucumbers he made a lot of videos about eugenia cooney he would act like her he would like make these videos of he would dress up like eugenia and do eugenia kitchen video or whatever cooking yeah. eugenia kitchen. is that person still around i mean like i've seen those videos before but I, I, I'm, like, not familiar with this creator. Like, is, are they still around? See, and this is what I'm talking about, like, the longevity of your social media career. It, it's like, do, do you really think that dressing up as someone like this and doing something like this is, like, people are going... In videos, and, and he would, like, just make these parody videos of you. And I feel like it really fostered, like, an online, this negative community of people who didn't like you. They went over there. Definitely. Like, it was crazy. Like, you know, it kind of started out as like, you know, like 4chan and stuff like that. Like, they would kind of like make fun of me and be like, you know, call me like probably a lot of comments that people see online. But he kind of turned it into like this thing of like beyond just make fun of Eugenia. He kind of turned it into like Eugenia is a bad person. She knows what she's doing. She's influencing people like, um, you know, basically like go dislike all her videos. Like he started really encouraging people. You can't say that though. Like that's against terms of service to say that. Really? Because yeah. People listening to him at the time, like I think now, um, he's kind of, you know, not really as liked, um, because like <laughs> some pretty big things with him, I guess. But yeah, at the time, like everyone was just listening to him, and it was crazy because he originally was nice to me. Like, oh my, Chris Hansen went after him. <laughs> Onision is more of a rabbit hole than Girl World. <sighs> Well. Like way back, like he he was like making videos in support of me and saying like people shouldn't hate on Eugenia. Um, he he would like message me here and there sometimes like being nice. Yeah. <laughs> and 
I guess he so, just kind of was like, oh, let's switch it up. <laughs> so yeah, I think he's off social media now, I believe. I think so, uh, yeah. I think so, but uh, I don't want to spend too much time on on him. But I just like, like here, not only are you getting negative comments in your video, in your chat, you're getting 5150 to your house, you're getting uh, mobile crisis team sent over. Yeah, hmm? I think they invited me to their house and then so yeah. that, there was no one else around. So I was like, oh, great. <laughs> so, and, and then, so you're getting it from all these angles and then you get the situation where you have an, a person who's just making dedicated videos about you. So negative one. There's a couple. Well, I'm talking about Anissi on one, Anissi on one. Yes. So I was just, it was, it just, it's like, even if you don't like you, like if you don't like Eugenia, that's fine. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like Eugenia, right? But like, at what point do you be like, wow, this is a lot of negativity here. I don't want to be a part of that. You know, and you just like st take a step back. It's, I don't know. I just feel like it's unjustly. That's kind of how I feel. Cause see, like, if I didn't like somebody, I would just kind of like not watch them, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I just kind of feel like, um, you know, like you can, like, there's, yeah, there's, like, there's, like hate watching is a thing. People hate Thank watching. Van Luke, how are you? Van Luke with the mocha, the monkey. We love you, Van Luke. Thank you. So um, I'll have a few more questions. Um, so okay. She's oblivious to someone bullying her by being fake nice. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I think that there's something to be said for that. I think Jeffrey's really good at that, too. Wow. Onision makes Amber Lynn look normal. I'm going to have to take a look at this person. Because, I, I mean, I've seen that video before, but I've never, like, looked. I've never cared to look into it. Okay, so your mom, she's been really sweet. Uh, she's on your videos. That's how people know her. We've seen her in cooking videos with you. And she really shows how caring she is for you. How does she deal with, like, the fame and the hate so, that comes from you? She gets, like, you know, like, she's, like, supportive of me, like, doing what I do. She gets a little bit scared, though. Like, certain things freak her out. Like, when, you know, there starts being, like, teams sent to the house. Or uh, we had, like, a while ago, like, there was people that actually, like, we still don't really know who they are. But they, they came to our house. They were just kind of doing, like, like chalkboard drawings outside, mm -hmm. um, like, on our driveway. And we still don't know. Um, and if, look, him playing on his phone. Like her talking, he, you, this is your interview, dude. Like, uh, anyway, um, if you guys don't know about this, I think she put it on her Instagram story last week. Someone actually door dashed a hamburger to her house. So it's still kind of going on. People were, I guess, showing up to her house and they're doing chalk drawings on her driveway and people are door dashing stuff like such as like a cheeseburger to the house know who it is it was it was kind of weird um and then, like you know death threats things like that like that stuff like when she hears like that kind of thing or some of like I, I get some really scary emails and things like that like that stuff it it, it will kind of freak her out sometimes because wow it, you're almost whoa she just like doesn't so she so she gets negative comments too and like oh wow because yeah, people will be so like mean to her i mean i think at this point like she she doesn't really look at it and sometimes like with me she's like eugenia you're you're so dumb how you like believe not in a mean way but just like how do you even believe this stuff because sometimes like when i'm reading things i'm like oh why does this person like think that like and she's like eugenia like there's just literally no point like in listening to like like reddit or places like that exactly <laughs> so and like i understand i understand like concern isn't hate i get that i get that in the comments like i see it and so i just i just want to say that that people being concerned is not a negative thing it, it is okay to be generally concerned for people. So would you ever go on the H3H3 H3 podcast? Okay. Well, I mean, you guys acknowledge that it's two separate entities. That someone door dashing a cheeseburger or baby formula to her house is different than someone having a discussion, trying to wrap their head around all of this, trying to provide sympathy to the situation. You've, you've just acknowledged that, and Eugenia agreed with you. She, you couldn't really hear it, but in the background, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't come across that way. Because when I first started making videos about Eugenia, her instinct, her, her gut instinct was to say, Jordy hates me. Jordy is a hater. That's immediately what she said on her Twitch live stream about me. It's like, have you seen Oh Lordy's Jordy's videos? Oh my God, that guy hates me. Mm. So, I mean, I don't know if you were that quickly to spring that back, like that was your instinct. It kind of tells me, well, it's like you're, you're kind of programmed to do, like, it's like, well, you know, anyone who, anyone who isn't kissing my butt or telling me what I want to hear, hater. Maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know 
like too much about him. I know he's talked about me like here and there. Um, the, the, A3, the A3 AG podcast is like, is the number one podcast on YouTube, oh, in my opinion. And I feel like I'm rooting for you and I would love for him to have you on the show. You know, I think, yeah, he's in California, I believe. And people always say that I should go on the show. I want to petition. I mean, it'll be great. It'll be a good laugh. But I think I want to petition you to go on the Acer A3 show because it did you check? Did you hear that for a second? <laughs> I really want you to go on the H3 podcast. And people are saying that I should go on. Like, <laughs> there, it's, I love that podcast. And Ethan Klein is very respectful. The whole team over there. And I, I understand that he's not perfect, neither am I. I don't agree with everything he's done in his past. I'm sure he doesn't agree with stuff I've done in my past. But the Ethan guy I know today is nice. And so I think that if he ever asks you to go on there, girl, do it. Oh, thank you, Rich. You know, if you say it, if he asks me, then I think like, hey, I'll have to like, I'll have to say yes. I don't know if he would ever want me on it, but you know, if he does, I'll have to be like, hey, I think, yeah, I think it would break the internet. I like really, I think it really would. Um, so, okay, how did you get, how did you get obsessed with Disney and Hello Kitty? Wow, so Disney, it's like, I guess like a lot of my family, like they just always like have like loved Disney. So we would just kind of like always be like going to like the Disney parks and, and all of that, you know, and then Hello Kitty, I guess like she's just kind of been around for like, I don't even know how many years now. Hmm. You guys don't think that that would go well. I, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I have never watched an episode of H3. Um, I know who Ethan Klein is. I know like the frenemies stuff. I know like the general outline of him and like what they do over there and everything. It just, I think that there's certain people. It's like the idea of an interview would be good, but I don't necessarily know if it would go anywhere. It's kind of like when he was about to interview Nikocado Avocado. It's like, well, what's going to come of this? If anything good, or if it's just going to be messy. Uh, but yeah, it would definitely get a lot of views. Definitely would get a lot of views. Like forever. Yeah. Um, thank you, Tommy. So then like, I just kind of, I always thought she was really, really cute. And then I guess like, you know, I bought one thing of her and then that just kind of like led to more and more. And yes, in real for life guys. And now it's just like, hello kitty. Everyone. <laughs> it's so weird. Like Adam said that there was like um, a girl that he, he said it was me. He was like posting it on Twitter. Um, and is, that mom, you? is it a picture of you? No, there's no pictures. That's okay. Okay, <laughs> he no says pictures. that I shook my head or something. And I was like, like, stop me. Like, I'll always stop. Like, I love meeting people. I don't I felt kind of bad um, that he thought that like, I would be like that, like in person. Cause trust me, like if I meet someone. Oh, she's just telling the story again of how someone like met Eugenia Cooney in person, but like it actually wasn't Eugenia Cooney. And then they tweeted that she was mean in person, but it actually wasn't her. It's, this is all silly. You walk around. I've seen you meet other creators like Sloan and like you physically met like Sloan and you hung out with people. And so <clears throat> when people say like show concern, it's like because you leave like there's so many videos of you like out in public walking around and stuff like that. So I get that and I get that you get a lot of stares and people are looking at you. And so how does that make you feel? So, you know, usually I don't mind. Like if people <laughs> want to like come and say hi, then I think like usually when I meet people, they're really sweet and I always love, you know, getting to meet them and, you know, getting to meet like, like some really nice people. I had like some like kind of weird situations where like people will kind of like take photos of me and then go and like post them on 4chan and things like that. Wow. And be, like, I saw her in person and almost like, like kind of make it into like, like they, they, like they don't like me or something and I just take photos. So it's a little bit weird just because it's like, you know, I wouldn't normally ever mind or anything like that, but it's kind of like if they, it doesn't happen that much, but like if they didn't like me, yeah. oh, Krista, thank you so, so much for the leaves. Um, but yeah, it's like if they didn't like me and then they just kind of go, I guess, like posting it on 4chan, I'm kind of like, oh, like that's kind of weird that I had no idea this person was even there. And they're, so they're taking pictures and you're like, you don't even know that they're snapping pictures behind your back. Okay, so at a convention, I'm just kind of like in a line or something. And I'm like, wow, I had no idea there was someone that doesn't like me that was like that close to me taking photos. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so like, what is that kind of thing? That's what it's like a little bit, I guess. What, like, okay, so when you have, when you're out and about, right? And you have people and they're like, what the fuck? And they see you, like, do you just smile at them or you just ignore it? Like well, you're like, take a picture, it'll last longer. Like, what do you, what do you, what do you do? She definitely doesn't get upset about it. It's like, if, if she sees someone in public and they give her a weird look or everything. Um, I have, I have logged in public. Like, guys, seriously. Next time, for, for fun. For fun, or maybe if, you know, you just want to see what I'm talking about. 
Go out in public and like pretend to be filming something. You will be amazed how many people turn around and look at you. Or like, you know, it's like, what are they doing? Be like insanely curious as to like what you're doing in that moment. Eugenia walks around and, you know, some people would say that she's already, you know, somebody that might be looked at more than an ordinary person. Um, on top of that, holding up your phone like this and doing this and, you know, walking around and talking really loudly like she does in some of her vlogs. I don't think it bothers her one bit because I've been vlog I've been vlogging in public before and everything. And like when people start to look at me, like it's really like uncomfortable for me. But I guess if you're somebody that wants that attention, then oh. Oh my gosh. She's definitely not telling people take a picture. It'll last longer. Uh, what, what's your reaction? Because like there's been like some instances where like people kind of be like looking at me a lot. Um, but then like, I'm not sure if they know me. Like, I'm not sure if they want to say hi or they don't. And it's like, I don't want to go up to them and be like, hi, like, I know, like you guys know who I am. Let's take a photo. Cause then it's like, if they don't. And you know, the weird part of when this goes on in some of her vlogs is it, it's not 30 year old women. It's, it's not people her own age. It's, you know, it's, it's like little kids. It, it, I mean, seriously, she did the state fair vlog. Go watch that state fair vlog. I think it was one of the first reactions I ever did to her. Um, people are walking up to, they're, they're like 12. I'm like, why are a bunch of 12 year olds coming up and saying hi to Eugenia? Like, do they, I'm like, there's no way a bunch of 12 year olds know who this is. Because I would imagine the demographic in here, like the people that are watching me talk about this right now, I would imagine everybody's in their 20s, 30s or higher. 12. It's like, oh gosh, like you got recognized at the local state fair and a lot of people came up to you to talk to you and get a picture with you and they're 12. Mm. Just Jeff. Hey there. Give me all the boring girl world vlogs over the sky talking any day. Happy birthday, Jordy. Oh, well, <laughs> thanks. It's been it's been a few weeks now, but I, I still appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> I'm 25. Yeah. Then I'm like, wow, I don't want to seem like I, you know, think I'm like a big deal or anything like that. And then I would probably be really awkward. So sometimes. I just kind of like, you know, be like, oh, hi, like kind of smile. And then if they want to come off, then, then like, can... I'm always like happy to like say hi to people and meet people and stuff. But at the same time, like you do have to be careful because, you know, like not everyone has good intentions too. And, and that's the thing, like, sometimes I feel like, like when I'm out and people are like, oh my God, Rich, can I take a picture with you? And like, I'm, I'm under pin honest. I'm like, listen, I don't have any makeup on right now. Like I'm not in character. This, like I'm, I'm out, I can't get a day off to save my life. And it's like. I understand that people who watch you and support you are, they put you in the position that, that you're in. Is, is he really, is he being serious? He, he can't get a day off to save his life. I, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to make him out to be like, he's a nobody, but I, I, I certainly didn't know who this was. Um, and honestly, I, I looked at Rich's Twitter the other day, um, just like I, I was actually trying to find a link to this stream to, to watch this interview. And there was a there was a tweet that he had up and it was like the Rich Lux meet and greet. And it was like at his local malls, Macy's or his local mall, Sephora or something. And the Rich Lux meet and greet. I, I mean, there was maybe like 10 people there. So, I mean, really to be recognized in public like this to the point where you don't think that you should be taking photos with people because you don't have any makeup on. I mean, y'all threw out that narcissism term earlier in the stream. Uh, it may have just boomeranged back into the conversation. Moon Rabbit, thanks so much for the super sticker. In, but at the same time, you don't you don't have to take a picture with people. Like you don't owe it to them. You know, you don't so they can post it on Facebook and get five likes. Well, yeah, but that's a really snotty way to look at it. Your sole income is derived on people watching your content, liking you, interacting with you, leaving comments, whatever. So if someone comes up to me in public and wants a picture with me, I'm taking a picture with them. <laughs> I don't owe you a photo. I mean, that that's a really, in my opinion, snobby attitude to have. Ugh. You know, I mean, it's nice that you do that. Like, it's so nice that you do take pictures with people, but just know, like, you don't have to because you are a person, you know? I kind of hear that because, like, yeah, you know, even, like, last time, actually, I was in Disney and it was kind of, like, 
it was like the day we were leaving and I had no time to do makeup that day but there was a girl she was really nice and she was kind of like oh can I get a photo um and I I, I took it because I was like okay. I'm sorry I look so bad right now <laughs> but I felt I, I felt I I felt bad saying no I was just like yeah well we can do it of course <laughs> I was like you, you, to her. I was like I'm so well, you did you took the picture <laughs> Well, that was good that you took it. That was good. Yeah. I always like, well, let me see. Let me see the picture. Okay. Oh, delete okay. that one. Delete that one. Okay. That one's good. Okay. Keep that one. Because, you know, especially when people post it around, I know like some people like, <laughs> don't really judge those photos. Like, I think there was like one more time that for some reason I didn't have makeup on going out and then it kind of got on Reddit and everyone was like, oh my gosh, you got like no makeup on here. Like, like they're just all like discussing it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like it's, I don't know. So Eugenia definitely reads the subreddits about her there's two there's two there's a there's a bigger one and then there's one that is described as the smaller meaner one um but she definitely goes in and looks at that because she references it a lot she talks about the subreddits and what people say in there and everything pretty frequently I can the vibe, yeah. here, like a little bit like do you, do you want to um Eugenia, do you want to since you have sub only chat open on your end I have questions in the chat <laughs> Someone said it's okay to say no. I need to learn that, that of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I guess sometimes it is. Wait, what's his catch line? I, I, I'm aware that he has a very popular YouTube channel. Oh, did, did, I, did I misinterpret something? Does he have a catchphrase that I interpreted as him being vain? I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to, you know, say that I was just ignorant about something. if you're so kind Eugenia if more people were like you the world would be a that's so sweet thank you CJ I think if more people were like rich in the world it would be an amazing world thank you so much. Halloween movies uh Nightmare I love Nightmare Before Christmas my showgirls oh showgirls is that a Halloween movie you can yeah I get it, it flopped really bad when it came out but now it's like a cult classic that's showgirls is a good movie I'll have to like Rich if you say it's good I'll have to oh yeah I like it I like it showgirls is one of my favorite movies oh. I just like I'll keep it on in the background a lot so just I love it now I'm like, I gotta see Showgirls. So I, um, I wanted to switch gears here. How is your relationship with Jeffree Star? Are y'all, do y'all have you spoken to him? Have y'all ever met in person? <laughs> you see, you see how she lit up? <laughs> he, 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 like the first syllable of Jeffrey didn't even come out of his mouth. It's just, <laughs> oh my, I can't get a day off to save my life as a catchphrase he uses. Okay, so maybe he meant that a little bit more playfully. Okay. And things like that. I love Jeffrey. I think that Jeffrey, he's, he's such an amazing person. And every time that we've like talked, he's always been so sweet. He's another person that I'll feel really, really bad. Um, if people call him like an enabler and all these things, and I never want to cause that for him. So I just really appreciate him. Like, you know, not kind of being like, I don't want to not be your friend, Eugenia, because of this stuff. And um, I've never actually met him in person. I've talked to him like a lot on TikTok and, you know, online and um, known him a long time. But yeah, so we've been friends a long time. But yeah, I've never met him in person, but I, I would love to. So are I you are you on the PR list? <laughs> People want to know um, actually like he, I, he was nice enough to send me like oh she's on the pr land she <laughs> let's go happy. that was so nice of him so i was gonna buy it all like he totally did not have to but i appreciate it so much so such a big um, thank you to jeffrey he's amazing he, well i mean so i get it so that's interesting because i saw that he made a post the other day he was on, on a live and he was like you guys and this jeffrey and i think you were you were in that you were in the box and oh. he said he said, you guys, like, I know Eugenia, we've spoken off camera, and he really defended you in that. Do you remember that? You were there. I don't know if you remember or not. Yes, and I, I, I can't even, like... Grainy days. Thank you for the super sticker. Thanks for being here. He really defended you. I mean... Like, defended her against what? Like, are we defending against the door dashers that are sending baby formula and hamburgers? Or are we defending against people that are having a very legitimate conversation? Like, what 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 defense is there to be provided? I'm 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 curious. Ever like thank Jeffrey enough for that because he's really been somebody that is like you know really defended me and honestly I'll, I'll always be like you know so grateful for that and um to have just an amazing friends like him because I I don't know I feel like you know a lot of people they like 
I'm like kind of too toxic and I get that I'm kind of like a hard person to be friends with and and Jeffrey I just honestly think he's like one of the most amazing people and he's so sweet and I feel like he's another person that just like never deserves hate like at all and well uh, here's the thing right that I know like behind the scenes is that behind the scenes Jeffrey Star has helped so many people yeah. and, and doesn't talk about it oh. like whether it be like donations or charities and then when you're our when you are when you're a person with that much wealth you constantly get like these sad stories like oh i have cancer or oh my god i need some financial help and then from what i know jeffree star has helped people behind the scenes and sent them thousands of dollars and doesn't ever talk about it at all but people don't see that side of it you know they they only see like they, they only want to believe like the the headlines and like the bs you know what i'm saying because jeffree star helping people is not going to what, what does that have to do with Anything that we're just, I mean, what does Jeffree Star sending a thousand dollars to a single mom that can't make rent this month have to do with defending Eugenia's presence on social media? I, I'm not picking up on here. Like, are, are you guys trying to say that he's a good person so that because he's a good person in that sense, he's a good person through and through in every aspect of his life? I don't think that that's how that works. You get that many clicks as opposed to him throwing a tantrum or calling out someone who's being dishonored something like that you know and so and i just want people to know that in the chat jeffree star won't talk about it but i'll talk about it he helps a lot of people financially behind the scenes who are in uh, okay and if you're if you're saying that he's a good person like that and he has you know he, he's a humble person he has integrity like that why are you virtue signaling for him on his behalf that defeats the purpose need of help whether it be charities foundations or individuals and people don't talk about that i feel like that's so so true rich and i just feel like you know like if people really like knew jeffrey and knew what charity does not make you a good person charity does not equal good person yeah and i mean if i was a billionaire or close to a billionaire or had the wealth that he has i mean what's a thousand dollars what's two thousand dollars what's five what's ten thousand dollars what a good person he was then i feel like i don't know like i hate like when i see like people you know being mean to him and like making these horrible videos and just kind of like judging like like him too just off of like stupid like drama that people just like make up and i feel like that's so unfair and that's exactly the thing you know he's helped so many people i feel like to the people that like know him and are like friends with him he's honestly like such a good friend and he's been honestly one of the people that's been like the kindest to me and i can really never thank him enough for that and just like for you know genuinely just being like such a good friend and such a good person and i can never say how much like it means to me so yeah i know with so many other people i'm sure they'd say the same definitely a tax write-off yeah and i mean there's a whole other conversation to that uh, of preying on people's ignorance about writing off taxes and charity and stuff like that it's like well i'm such a good person but it's like, okay, well, all of that charity that you're, you know, virtue signaling about here, that was actually used as a part of, you know, paying back your taxes. So uh, did you do that out of the goodness of your heart? Or you know, it's like when you go through the McDonald's drive through and your total's like, I don't know, like $1.30. And they're like, would you like to round up for the Ronald McDonald Foundation? It's like, <laughs> okay, what? So I can help a billion dollar corporation pay off their taxes? <laughs> They they are. They're preying on people's ignorance because some people there say, oh, yeah, I'll round up. Yeah, sure. I'd love to help somebody. It's like, okay, well, you clearly don't know what this is about or you're not. it's not registering with you. Thing. Like, you know, he's helped so many people. Mm -hmm. So I just really think, you know, he only deserves the love. And okay, so I'm going to these next these next few questions. Just say okay. no comment <laughs> or you don't have to answer them. Remember, it's OK to say no, girl. OK. You just say, I don't know, no comment. Okay, just, just say it, practice, no comment. No comment. Okay, okay. easy like that, you guys. And if she says no comment, we have to respect Eugenia and move on. And that's just the way it is. You know, it totally respect her. I really appreciate it. Like because you guys don't know, you guys, what you guys don't know is that she gets so many emails from news outlets wanting to interview her. You, got, you know that, you know, like every time you go viral online, your emails start blowing up and people want to talk to you. And then they're like, we're going to run a story. Like, do you want to comment? And I'm like, <laughs> and they run the story anyway, without you knowing. So I usually don't reply because I'm like, oh, I don't know like what they're going to turn this story into. So it's like, you know, Rich, it's good to get to do an interview with someone I know I can trust. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. It's like, it that's, like, that's not going to snake you or whatever like that. Right. Let me see. All right. Let me, uh, let me look at my chat here. You chat. If you want a question for Eugenia, keep it classy, Thank be you. respectful.
And if she says no comment, it's no comment. And I'm gonna pick good ones, not negative ones. So y'all be nice in the comments because it is it is such a rare, it is so rare to have her here. Oh, and I'm trying so, to be here, you know. Uh, okay, so again, you can always say no comment. Are you in therapy? I uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> not in therapy. Know, like some people are like, she should be, she should be doing this, but yeah. So uh, one comment, one, and I'm gonna kind of answer. The comment was, how is your health? So before you answer that. When I look at her, because like, I see that she's smiling, she's dancing on her TikTok. To me, I'm like, okay. So to answer that question, how is your health? Okay, really? Or no comment. You can say no comment. Well, I feel like some people might get like really mad at me, guys. And, you know, I really feel like I'm doing fine, honestly. Um, you know, like, I feel like a lot of people kind of always are like, oh, Eugenia is going to be like dead tomorrow or, you know, making like some really, really dramatic, I guess, like statements. Yeah. Um, but Did you get, I see, I see it in your comments when people say, oh, you're dying. Uh, uh, this, this is, uh, this is an interesting part of the interview here. Um, I don't want to hear the answer to this question unless it is from someone that has graduated from medical school that has uh, had some time to get to know her and run some tests. I don't want to hear, I'm fine. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you saw me singing and dancing to single ladies on TikTok last week. I'm great. <laughs> no. And then you're like, well... I, I, and you, you have dressed that in several videos I saw, so. And it's like, and, and just by the way, and I'm not trying to act like you guys, like I'm like some sort of like health expert. Like, I feel like sometimes people, if I say that, then they're like, she's preaching this to like, like people. And I'm like, no, I'm not trying to like preach anything, you guys. But, you know, you I'm know. just saying like, I feel like I'm doing okay. And like, you, you know, I'm fine, so. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, I have a question. So, it be you being Eugenia and it being hard to trust people and being what you went through, is it hard for you to like date? You know, like, are you, because like me, like, I don't, I've never had a boyfriend. I don't care about having a boyfriend. I like making money. I like working. So that's not really on my mind. So like, no one ever talks about Eugenia's boyfriend. Is there? <laughs> I'm kind of totally single rich. Like, no, <laughs> yeah. So, and I guess it can be, because, you know, I guess it's kind of like the same thing where it's like, you definitely have to be kind of careful. Because I guess when you just kind of end up with like some bad situations with, with people, like with some people, then yeah. it's just kind of hard to... I guess like always trust everybody. It's like, I don't want to believe like everyone's, like I think there are a lot of good people out there and I guess I'm like at the right. Yeah, there are, but it's like, we remember the ones that like did us wrong, you know? So I get it. You know, and this like, when I when I meet people and they want to, they're interested in getting to know me. I'm like, what do you want? You want money? You want clout? Are you really here for me? It really is difficult to to really meet genuine people. And the only reason- Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Well, I mean, that kind of tells me that you're not in the right social circles. You're not surrounding yourself with the best kind of people. I mean, if you're constantly skeptical of everyone, constantly skeptical of people, it's like you must not think very highly of yourself. If your first instinct is someone who shows interest in you to think, okay, well, they must want money. It's like you must not think that you have anything to offer. You must think very lowly of yourself. It's like, oh, okay, well, they like me. Do they want money? That's sad. That's sad. I don't know. Maybe some parts of this interview Eugenia should be conducting. The only way you find out if they're genuine is with time. You know, you really got to like watch them, just take a, take a, a seat back. Um, I guess sometimes you just have to kind of, you know, see how, like, see what happens with people. And I guess like, you know, time will tell. It's like, <laughs> they end up like, genuinely. Do you, like, ever, do you ever want to like move away and go into the city or anything like that? Or you're happy where you're at? You know, I guess like here it's, I guess it's, it's, it's nice. You know, like it's very like, you know, there's a lot of trees and, and stuff from like what, that. From what I hear, Eugenia lives in a huge mansion. It's like tucked away in a nice neighborhood. So that's, I mean, so I wouldn't want to leave either, but everyone is different. You know, I guess like, yeah, I guess right now it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice area here. So I guess for now I'm just kind of here. Um, I guess like the city, like I'm not too far away from New York City, so. I guess that's like, right. you know, you live right there. I mean, that's a huge, yeah. that is a huge city. Like, yeah, New York definitely is like a crazy city. I honestly don't really know if I'd want to like live there because it's like, it's, I don't it's, a, it's a crazy place. It's, it's like really, really like, yeah. like, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's like, it's really expensive too. Let's not forget. Thanks so much, Sal. Um,
I think a lot of these questions have very obvious answers, but we're just listening to them dance around trying to provide a different response to them. It's like, okay, Eugenia, are you single? Well, why are, why are you single? You're not dating anybody. You're not seeing anybody. It's like rich. She never leaves that bedroom. It's like the, the mom controls everything. It's like the mom won't even let her have friends, let alone a boyfriend. I, do you want to move? I mean, Rich, you know that she has to live with the mom. You know that wherever that mom goes, she goes. I, I, I mean, so is Eugenia out there in the dating scene? Is Eugenia planning on moving out and starting her own life in New York City? The answer to all of these questions is no. I mean, we all know this. In New York, I think it might be even more expensive than LA. Okay, like, it's crazy. Um, another question is, what are your long-term goals? What do you want to do? And like stuff like that. Yeah, that's a good question. So, you know, I guess sometimes like I'm not always exactly even sure like what I'd be good at like long term. Like, like me, like if someone asked me like, what's your five-year plan? I'm like, I just want to continue to grow and use yeah. and just grow my channel and grow my social media presence and just like that, just continue to grow the channel, you know? And so is that how you feel too? Yeah, like the same way, I guess, where I'm just kind of like, you know, I guess like trying to make like TikToks and, you know, yeah. like, yeah, YouTube and all that. And have, have you ever done any sponsorships or collaborations? Um, you know, I haven't really done like too many. I guess I've done like a couple of things here and there, but I guess at the same time, like I don't always want to do like everything because I guess I don't always want to seem like I'm, I guess like constantly like, oh guys, like here, like if I yeah, like, like, sell, sell. I'll do it. But yeah, I guess I just don't want to seem like I'm just always trying to like sell things to people. Would you be open to doing a sponsorship with the brand or collaboration? I think like, you know, as long as I like genuinely like like it and everything like, like that and like think like, you know, everyone like people watching will like it. Then I think like, yeah, then I'd be Oh, she'd do it with Jeffrey in a heartbeat. Oh my, be a part of my gothic beach party palette. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah, in a heartbeat. Diaz, hey there. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jord. As someone who struggles with the same kind of issue, you say the truth without being completely disrespectful to or of the disorder. And I understand it's a very, th well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. And thank you for the super chat. Um, it's a very fine line that needs to be walked uh, here on social media and everything. And I think for the, a lot of the firsts, like I've said in another video, this kind of thing that we're witnessing on YouTube and on the internet in general, I, I mean, social media is very young. Social media hasn't been around that long. So I think that like, honestly, and like, I hate to say, like sound like all philosophical about this, but it's like, we as like a species are still learning to respond to certain things just because there's no precedent. They've never happened before. You know, uh, I mean, to, to the extent of Eugenia Cooney being Eugenia Cooney, I don't think that there's been a Eugenia Cooney. <laughs> so... But thank you for saying that. And thank you for the donation. A sponsorship from some bag store. Hmm. I'm gothic. Let me in on that. <laughs> One thing, is it is it wrong for me to assume that like most of the people who are who like leave you negative comments or stalk you? Are they mainly men or women? Um, a lot of them are honestly girls. No, I, I always thought it was like guys, guys who were like too. obsessed with you. Like, and there like, are guys too. Like there's some guys that like, I'll get like an emails and things like that. Like where they'll be like very, very, um, like angry, I yeah. guess you could say like, kind of like, like, like there's this one guy, he emails me under like different emails, like every day, like a hundred emails. And, um, like Rich, I wouldn't want to say anything that like makes you like, like sad, but, um, like he, he even mentions like you. Like it's oh, crazy. Oh, listen, I get emails too. I get death threats. I get the negative comments. I get it, but I, I'm so used to it. Like whenever I, I read it, I just forward it to the lawyer. Like, here you go. Just collect the receipts, collect it all. Get the little IP address thing going, just send it over and, and let them like, like, they can catalog it. And, and, Cause you can kind of tell if it's like- Oh my God, all these people have lawyers. Should I have a lawyer? <laughs> I mean, hey, I have a paralegal certificate. Is that good enough? Or should I hire an attorney? When I do these live streams, should I have someone sitting right here? <laughs> Lucy Lastic, thank you for making this easier to watch. Oh, well, thanks for hanging out with us, girl. Thank you for the donation. I just forwarded it all to the lawyer. I mean, for real. I might, I might have to go to law school. 
<laughs> if I want to continue this YouTube thing. <laughs> like the same person or a different person, stuff like that. I'm bummed them like this. Way. He's like mad that like I, I didn't like run things the way he wanted. I didn't play the games he wanted me to play on Twitch. So like I ruined his life. And oh wow. So. Oh. Get rid of her. And he's like, you ruined everything. Uh, he literally told me, he's like, I hope you die in a plane crash. It's like, oh, okay. Whoa. I mean, listen, do not, listen, guys in the chat, and do not wish death upon Eugenia. Like, stop. Oh, because, God. listen, I believe that there's power in the tongue, and what you say will come back to you. So, y'all need to stop, okay? And if y'all are going to send her death threats, just send it to me, okay? Oh, no, really? Just send it to me. Like, she gets, she already gets enough hate as it is. Like, stop saying that in the chat. Like, y'all, like, seriously, that's not nice. You see what I mean, though? It's like the portion of the audience, which I don't think makes up a majority, but the portion of the audience who do blare obscenities at her and say really harmful things and DoorDash baby formula and cheeseburgers to her house, him sticking up for her in that regard makes him look like the hero. So it's like, do we are we just supposed to forget about everything else just because you're the hero in this one scenario, this one isolated scenario of you sticking up for her when you are right to what you're saying right here is correct. But it's like, do we now have to view you as the hero and nothing but the hero because you told people not to call her bad names? It's like we all agree that you shouldn't be calling her bad names. So... I, I don't know. Like, it just seems a little bit patronizing to the audience when you really think about it. Oh, thank you. Okay, you know, I don't rich death threats either. Like, we need Rich in the world. He's amazing. If he wasn't here, the world would never be the same. But, um, so yeah. so this, ne this next question has to do with your community, like your hardcore fans. And so this is why I want to say, if you don't want to answer it, just say no comment, okay? So you amassed a lot of following on Twitch. Like, you had a huge hardcore fan base. And then now you are on TikTok a lot yeah. and, and, and they're both great platforms. I don't think that I'm not trying to speak negatively on any of them, but I, I, I have gotten emails. And so I want to ask that they, they wanted me to ask you this. So again, if you don't want to answer, just say no comment. Right? Oh, no so the, the comment was, they feel like, have you abandoned Twitch for TikTok? So, you know, guys, like, and again, I'm, you don't have to answer, EG. It's up to you. It's up oh, to you. You're, you're fine, Rich. No worries. Um, well, first of all, you know, people that are upset with me because, like, I know that there has been some people that are just, like, really, I guess, like, not happy with me. Kind of like, I'll answer it for her. There's more reach on TikTok, it gets out to more people. On Twitch, you are going into a niche community, in my opinion. A lot of people who use Twitch are gamers. So, a majority of people that are only watching her on Twitch are gamers. So it's like, why would I only want to limit my sphere of influence and my interactions on social media to gamers when on TikTok, there's way more people, but let's, let's see how she tries to answer it. Like being more on TikTok. Um, but honestly, kind of, yeah, I guess I've just kind of been having like so much fun, like here on TikTok and like, you know, like, I don't know, like Twitch, it just kind of was getting like in some ways like really like stressful and then i come in here and it's like it's been so much fun because you know there's people like you and um and jeffrey and a lot of like the really great people that are on here that have made it such a good experience and a lot of you guys that are nice in chat you know and um and i'm sure you know like parsley mm -hmm. and paul and it's like mm -hmm. i just feel like there's like a really nice like community community yeah i, I see it and i hope it stays that way I you know so. i always say that way so do you plan do you plan to go back okay so her answer was basically it's more fun TikTok is more fun than Twitch. That was what I took. For, I mean, it was a lot of it was a lot of words to say. TikTok is fun. Do you think Deb ate the cheeseburger? Well, I saw somebody say earlier that they think that Buzz is overfed. So I don't know. Maybe Buzz got into it. Thanks so much, Chantel. Plus, she's exhausted. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's there's more to TikTok. There's way too there's way more to TikTok than Twitch. Back to Twitch, like every now and then, or you're kind of like um. I guess for now, and and Taylor, you too. You're such a sweet person, Taylor. Like you're another person. It's been like so great having you on here. Um, so Twitch, like I guess right now, I'm kind of just like, uh, I guess not really so much on there. And there's kind of also been like you know, sorry to like get into this at all, but like some drama too, like with some of like the Twitch mods and, and things like that. And not, not, not all of them. I don't mean to like speak badly upon people, but I think like 
they kind of are mad that like I came over here. So they're like, oh, expose Eugenia now when like nothing even like happens. But I guess Rich, you not you kind of know like how that oh, is. Oh yeah, I see. I see a little bit of it, and it seems just kind of petty. But you know, you you do have you do have a following over there. Yeah, I would just maybe like, feel kind of bad. I'll just maybe like kindly let them know like, hey, I'm over here now. Like I'm still alive, guys. I'm over. I'm over here. You know. So maybe like they'll jump over. Yeah, you know, it might like, and I feel like you know, because a lot of them, I guess, I kind of figured like they follow me on like you know, like Instagram or Twitter, I guess Twitter is like X now or, or whatever. Yeah, but oh, I so guess toxic, I- bro. Twitter's so toxic, bro. Yeah. Seriously, okay. it's so bad. I just get on there, I'll post something, I'll just get off. I don't even engage. Like a lot of time I barely look at it because like some of the people on there, it's like, it's it's so bad sometimes. It's so bad. <laughs> but I guess I kind of figured where I guess like I was- He just rushed her answer. Uh. I mean, th this whole interview, I mean, since the very beginning, he seemed preoccupied. I- I mean, and honestly, like throughout this whole interview, interview and air quotes, I, I mean, have we learned anything? Has he, has he really like asked her one hard hitting question? Eugenia Cooney finally addresses it all. I have heard her say nothing new. I have not learned anything from this interview that I did not know prior. Except maybe that someone DoorDash baby formula to her house. That that was actually something I've never heard before. But I, I don't know if that encompasses the term it all, addresses it all. Moon Rabbit, hey, what even is the end game of Lux and Jeffrey with Eugenia? Uh a lot of a lot of people and I'm tending to agree with them, it, it, this is just all for social media points. This is all for engagement. This is to get their name out there more. Um, regardless of whether or not it's good attention, it's attention. And I guess in the eyes of some people on social media, attention is attention. Attention equals money. Money equals whatever it means to them. I was posting like, hey guys, I'm more on TikTok now that a lot of them kind of like figured that out. But I can see like what you're saying that it's like a good idea to maybe kind of like, just like let people like, like I guess like communicate that. Yeah. So that way, hopefully some of those people wouldn't be like mad. I know like some people get like really upset with that. And I've had people also like, you should like refund subs over there. And it's like, if I could, I would. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that. And it's like, I'm not like trying to like- Cause you're like, you're, you're not on over here anymore. You should refund. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, oh, people get so mad at me over that. I'm just like- But I think, I think- Shadow Midna, thank you so much for giving me your first ever super sticker. A Eugenia interview with Jordy. Um, <laughs> I don't think she'd ever do it. I don't think that she'd ever do it. But I'm telling you, I would prepare for it because I know a lot of the responses that she would give to a lot of the questions I have. So if I'm expecting her to say something, I would phrase things in such a way that it would try to get to the root of the problem or the real answer that I would like for her to provide to the audience. Because this this is all like softball questions, like under underhand pitch, slow softball questions or like, you know how like little kids will go play t-ball at like age four and five. Well, they'll put the baseball or the softball up on that t, and then they'll just like hit it off and then they get to run to all the bases and it doesn't matter. Like, like this, this is what this interview is. If I was ever afforded the opportunity to sit down with her and do this sort of panel thing. Um, I would come very prepared. I think I was, I think I remember, I, it was like a couple months ago. I remember telling you, um, I was like, Hey, get on TikTok. Remember? I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, just walk. Rich, you were actually the one that got me into it. Like, I was, like just, I was like, girl, just get on TikTok. I was like, it, it's, it's kind of like blowing up a little bit, you know? And, and then you're like, okay. And then you posted some videos of you walking and it, they got views. Yeah. You remember that? I was so surprised. I was like. I think that was like my first video like on here and it like hit like a million pretty fast and I was like, wow, Rich knows what he's talking about. Like I mean, when, when, when you've been online long enough, you kinda know how to navigate the waters a little bit. I feel like I'm not gonna say I know everything, but I, I know a little bit how to navigate waters. I um, think you really do. Like you you have like some of the best ideas. Like even my Selena video, like I remember you told me to like buy that cost. Because I because I love Selena, Kentania and and, and the other family, and I was like and I love that whole dynamic. Now, what do you mentioned that earlier? That basically you said 
that he was the one that was the brains behind the Selena costume and the Selena TikTok TikTok tip top tip top lip sync. Hmm. Wonder if she wanted him. I, I, I wonder if he was okay with her saying that just now. You know, it, and it makes you think. It makes you think. If he said that to her behind the scenes, she went and bought the costume, did the lip sync, just basically did what he said for her to do. I, I mean, that is a very naive person. I, I, if you're going to listen to what somebody is, tells you to do like that, and then you wonder, I mean, he he's not even at the top of this uh, little social circle. Could you, you guys talk about it in the chat. I see you talking about it. What would be the influence if Jeffrey were to tell her, hey, do this. Hey, girl, I know what you think of me. I know you revere me. I, I know you think of the world of me. So I'm going to tell you to do that. Like, it's, <laughs> he wants his 5%. <laughs> he gives her a lot of these suggestions. Yeah, wow. I make with like Yolanda, just being like, that's, listen, I don't hate anybody. The only person I hate in my life is Yolanda because she murdered Selena. That's the only person I hate, okay? And, I'm, and that's me. That's just me. I'm allowed to have that opinion. I do not like I Yolanda. Do I do not like Yolanda because she murdered Selena. I hate her so much. Gosh, Xtina, you're amazing. Thank you for the fall candle, Xtina. And honestly, Rich, I agree. You know, Selena, she'll forever be a legend. So it's like, I don't ever try to hate people either. But it is kind of like, you know, Yolanda, where she literally like murdered her. It's like, that's the exception. Yeah, like I love Selena. She's just echoing whatever he says. I mean, really, D did she know who Selena was if this would have never been brought up? <laughs> I love all her music, like, and but you know, it was a, it was a sad story when that stalker, whatever lady Yolanda murdered her. So I was just like sad about it. So that's the only person I don't like. Yeah, no, I'm but really okay, um, okay. I do I do want to say is that you have a lot of people who watch you. You have a lot of people who a lot of big creators that you talk to and you can reach out to and stuff like that. I always feel like when it comes to when it comes to you, and I, I told this to my friend the other day. I was like, Eugenia Cooney is a person. She, she's her, she's her own person. Like. Like no one controls her. She's her own entity, right? So if if there is something, because there's a lot of people who show concern online for you. But I'm, I was like, if she just told us that she's controlled by Deb, like an hour ago. She said about about the whole Jacqueline thing. She basically told me after that moment. She said, I, "You pretty much can't trust anybody, Eugenia. What what is, what is that if it's not controlling? She's not controlled by anyone." <laughs> I, I, in this stream alone, I found an example of that. Allison Westensko, hey there. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Thanks for being here, girl. Toxic positivity. Mm. I'm 26 and Selena was a household name in my Mexican home growing up. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I mean, like, I, I don't understand, like, it it really just seemed like she was echoing whatever he said in that situation right there. If Eugenia Cooney wants help or anything like that, she can find it herself. Like she can do anything that she wants herself. Like, does that make sense? Like you're your own person, you're your own woman. You do what you want, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. And so there have been several creators reach out to you that you have real conversations with and they're like, everything is fine. And we asked you some questions on here and you were like, yeah, I'm fine. Um, you, you've gone through situations where you're 5150, you've had crisis mobile teams come over to your house. And so you have all these people who come to you and yet you're still here on TikTok doing your thing. So I just always felt like if there was something truly wrong with Eugenia Cooney, then it would already, it would have already been exposed and been taken care of because you're talking about police who have been involved, you know? Exactly. You know, I think like, I know like some people and it's really weird, like even after and he said an iteration of this earlier in the stream, and that's when my eyebrows were really raised and my eyes really widened, and I was just like, is this person just stupid or are they gaslighting? Like, I'm not sure. I mean, here we, we're seeing it again. We're seeing it again. Well, you know what, you guys? She's been around with so many different police and so many crisis teams, and there's so many people involved, and they know what's going on. So, I mean, really, if something were actually taking place, something by now, of course, would have been done about it. Are you kidding me? That's patronizing. That is so patronizing.
Because uh, no, that's not true. I, I mean, just, what? Because a mobile crisis team and Deb Cooney was standing there with her army of lawyers behind her. You think that something's going to get done about it? Ugh. Chantal Marie. Hey there. Thanks again. Thanks for the super sticker. Thanks for hanging out. Money and power. Yeah, I mean, on top of that and everything, it's a lot easier to get things done in general in life when you have money. They're a wealthy family. You're in a situation, like, I'll, I'll see some comments are like, they're mad. They're so mad something didn't happen. So they're like, this was the final straw with her. She's an evil person. I'm like, but no, you, you guys, like, the police came over. They saw everything was fine. It's like, there's not, like, really, I think, like, I think some people <laughs> kind of just. Okay, well, we don't know that. You, this is you telling us this. We, we weren't there for the interview. We weren't there for the, you know, them showing up at the door. We don't know if you had lawyers there or not. Uh, this is just you telling us. We're supposed to just take your word for it. It's like, you know, freak out a little bit more than like they need to. And it's like you said that, you know, I feel like, you know, if I had to like do something, then I can just kind of do that without people trying to make like all these like crazy phone calls and <laughs> trying to contact like police and crisis teams and, you know, Weird. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to be, a lot of people I see in the comments, they like the interview, how it's going. There's some people who do not like how it's going at all. They're like, you're not answering the questions we want to answer. Yeah, again, guys, I'm just being 100% respectful. Eugenia Cooney is her own person. She can do what she wants. And I think that she knows, she knows herself more than anyone else. I, you know, it's like, you know, you you know yourself more than anyone else because you live in this. So just know that Paul Dow and so many other creators like Shane Dawson, we're always here to help you and support you and uplift you in a positive way to me you know like having like good friends like you guys like it really really does make me feel like so much better like i feel like kind of just because you know yourself does not mean that you know what's best for yourself i think that that is the glaring contradiction to his statement just now it's like just because you live in your own skin and you feel everything doesn't mean you understand everything or does not mean that you have the tools or the mental capacity to make the decisions that are necessary for you to be a functioning, healthy person in society. Uh, so knowing yourself, I, I, I don't know. This isn't some sort of like self, uh, like confidence thing. This, this is about something entirely different. Raquel Starris. Oh, your, your last her name. Your last name is Starris? Starris. I like Starris better, so I'm going to say Starris. Raquel Starris, thank you so much for the super sticker. Thanks for hanging out, girl. Uh, how late am I? Oh, we've been hanging out maybe about two hours-ish. Two and a half hours. I don't know, Infernal. Ophelia Payne, thanks so much for the super sticker. Next, she's going to be friends with James and Colleen. She does not know herself anymore. Ooh, Kelly, interesting statement. A lot of people actually don't know themselves at all. Yeah, I, I think that that is... That was not... I don't know. Like, if he, if he thought that he ate after saying that, like, no. No, 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 no. I feel like that was very misguided. <laughs> uh, Aaron John, hey there. Thanks for the videos, Jord. Oh, well, thank you so much. You're welcome for the videos. Uh, we're all, yeah. Regardless of any real. I think you're right, that girl. When you're just kind of like on your own, which even like, you know, before I came here and kind of started talking to like a lot of you guys more like on Twitch, I feel like you're very much just kind of more in it by yourself. And I feel like even that like mentally, it's like a lot harder. So, you know, like I'm, I'm seriously like so appreciative, like to you guys that are such good friends to me. Like it really, really means a yeah. lot. And I was I was talking to the creator on here named Van Luke, and she had made a statement to me just a couple months ago. She was like, you know, leaving negative comments to Eugenia Cooney is not helping anything at all. And it's, it's like, it's it really not, you know, like, let's just say there is something wrong. Okay? okay, let's just say that. Leaving negative comments on your chat, on this chat, is not helping anything at all. You know, all you can do is just... We know, girl. We know. I, I know. But don't be... This, this, in my opinion, is an attempt at grouping. It, it is. We are all very aware we're not that dumb 
that we know that blaring obscenities at someone or door dashing a cheeseburger to their house is not helpful. We're all very aware of that. But don't be grouping, because in my opinion, from what I see and everything, the nasty things that they're talking about right here, they're blowing this way out of proportion. And that's not what's going on at all. So it is, it's trying to do this hero arc of like pointing out something very obvious that everyone agrees with, but that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about. That's not what's being said. Why am I whispering? Turn off the comments. I'm late to the stream. What if I missed? <laughs> well. <laughs> uh. Pray for someone, wish them the best, wish them my success, and it'll, it'll work itself out. But I just don't agree with the level of toxicity that you get because you're a genuinely nice person. So that's why I always say, like, leave Eugenia alone. If you guys don't like her, leave the comments over here because she didn't deserve it because she's been nothing but nice. Rich, and honestly, like, you're such a nice person. So I never never want people to like i like i i feel bad you saying that because i'm like oh no i only want people to show you love because like that's what you deserve but um, seriously thank you because like it's 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 crazy to me because like i i really i just try to be a good person i try to be the best person i can be every day and it's it's crazy because like some people they literally just act like i'm i'm purposely trying to do all these horrible things and i i'm just like the devil like i'm the worst yeah. And like, again, again, Eugenia Cooney is your own person. And like for the, someone in the comments said, like, I'm reading a script, like, girl, I'm just speaking from the heart. There's no script right here. It's just, it's just a, a can and a, and a box and a ring light. All I need is a mic and a light. You know, I don't have no script. Look, really look, there's no, there's no people right there holding a light to Eugenia Cooney, nope. uh, telling her, showing her her script, what to say. We're just having a casual conversation. I mean, a lot of what he said in this interview has just been flat out just I don't agree with it. So, I mean, if you were reading off a script, that would make it a lot worse. <laughs> like, it's not excusable, but I, I suppose if I were to excuse some of what you said, I guess it would just be like mindless babble that you didn't really think it through. But if you did think it through and put it down on paper and then read off of it, that would be a lot more terrifying. Uh, Anita Marie, hey there. Uh, you can a document profit off of her death. Too. Well, I I don't know. I, I mean, a lot of people have talked about like the what ifs and everything, but um, it is. It's it, and you know, and like oftentimes in in life and everything, it's like people don't have something to say or people don't want to step up and say what needs to be said until you're no until you're not able to or until it's too late. Which, it's sad, but I mean, you see that in a lot of different facets of life, not just what we're seeing here right now. It is what it is. That happening, guys. Like, there's, there's no scripts. Like, the thing is, like, how many times do you think, just off the top of your head, how many times do you think that, uh, whether it be police, commissioners, crisis teams, people who are worried, have physically reached out to you in your mind? If you just throw a number out there. No, definitely, like, kind of, oh my gosh, like, wow. It, it, it's a lot. Because the police, like at this point, like they, they kind of know us. Um, so even they're just kind of like, oh, thank you, staff. Even the police is kind of like, oh, you know, like they won't always call me at this, this point unless there's like a lot coming in. Yeah. Or sometimes like they'll just kind of call and be like, hey, Eugenia, it's just that time where we're just like, you know, checking because we're always getting these crazy calls. And I kind of just feel like it's like an ongoing thing of it's kind of like always happening or if it's not. Well, like, you would say like multiple multiple times then it's happened yeah or if it's not that like the other day too like I, i'm just getting like random phone calls and i don't even know how these people get my number yeah, yeah. And, um be a part of my life and like and you know if she means well like that's nice and everything but i guess at the same time like when people actually like somehow like track down like my number and start calling me and like you know like trying to facetime and i don't really know who they oh, are I hate, yeah i hate that what even was the original question I, I don't know i feel like she just goes on tangent sometimes goth freak lol jordy inspired me to start uploading on youtube oh good luck glad you wanted to start uploading enjoy the ride hc can you please slow the chat down thank you so much for the donation um honestly we don't have much of this left um i don't i don't think the chat's moving that fast I think we'll be okay. There, there's not much left of the interview, so we're, we are going to be done here soon. But thank you so much for the donation. Yeah, I try to do that. 
yeah, uh -huh. it's a little bit like, I don't know, I would never want to like be mean or anything like that, but. And so it just, but somebody was like, oh, they're not doing their jobs. And I'm like, well, you have to, from just off, just looking into your background on social media and the times that you've had uh, been swatted or and all that bad stuff that happened to you, 5150, everything. It's like, so all those people weren't doing their job? All, like, this is multiple people, not just one or two guys. So we've had kind of a lot of- mm. He straight out just said what Jacqueline did was bad. Oh, wow. That was bad. Did you hear that? That was bad. Megan, thanks so much for the super sticker. Take a shot every time she says the cops know us at this point. I have heard her say that a few times now. Says the same sentence over and over again. People like we've had like multiple. You've had a lot of people. Yeah, well, we've had a ton of different police officers. Like literally, like one time they had to have me like come into the police station, and I kind of just had to meet with like everyone there and just be like, hey, you know, introduce myself. Like mm -hmm. I'm the girl you keep getting calls about, guys. Um, and then you know we've had the the recently the crisis team. Um, we had the animal people, which it's like, why, why is that even happening? I also feel like no matter what you do, Eugenia, you'll never please the masses. You know, like, you know, how you, those negative, those negative Nancy's in the comments, like no matter what you do is never going to be enough. You know, I remember when I first got on YouTube, if you look back, I had like horrible messed up crooked teeth, like really bad, like throwing up gang signs. They're like really bad teeth. Right. And then when I, when I got my teeth fixed because the negative comments were so bad, I, I was like, I felt bad. Like I would cry and I felt bad about it. So when I got my teeth fixed or with veneers, now the comments are like, oh, they look so fake. Oh, they're too big for your mouth. And I'm like, you know what? Exactly what stuff. Like, Never gonna win. It's it... No matter what you say or do, it just kind of seems like it's like always wrong to somebody. So I feel like I feel like if you when you get comments and they're like, oh, Eugenia, you look this way. I feel like if you were to do the exact opposite, you'd be like, oh, you're, you're too this, you're too that. Like people will never be happy. Oh you come in and like say that like there's some people that will say like oh eugenia you know you like you know i guess like the ones that like you know will kind of like normally see um and then like there's also ones that will come in and be like ah, eugenia wow like you're looking like really like 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 um <laughs> how do i say it <laughs> like would it be like i think it's okay to say whatever they say right yeah yeah go ahead. oh i know we're they're they're negative nancy's now <laughs> ne negative nancy's you know, and I did notice that too. It's like, why would you group swatting with 5150? Very different in my opinion. Very different. But uh, again, we, we're seeing a lot of it being grouped together. Grouping. We have a big grouping problem in this interview. Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, Eugenia, wow, we can tell, like, you're getting so fat today. We can see how pregnant you're looking. Like, wow. No, that they tell you that? They tell they tell you that, that you look fat today. Like, couple come in. I think I saw an account earlier. They were like, fatty Eugenia or something. You, it's like, comments like that. It's like, you're never going to, yeah. Like, it's never going to, yeah. Thing, then you tell me the opposite thing. I'm like, I don't even know what to think with you guys. It's who, like. <laughs> who, who said that? Who said that? So I can go, I'll go have talk to them. You know, you know they <laughs> different ones that will do it like some of them like sometimes like like when especially if chat's moving faster i won't even be sure like you said it but there'll be people that will like come in and say that too so sometimes i'm like i don't even know what people think they tell me like everything how, how do you eugenia seriously like how do you deal with so much online criticism you know i guess at this point i'm just kind of i guess i'm so like used to it and i just kind of feel like it's like you know, it's like sometimes it's like, I'm, I'm sorry, I make people like so mad and I guess kind of spark like such a big reaction out of some people. But I guess I just kind of try to keep going. I guess I figure, you know, you can't just like stop what you're doing over um, like, you know, some people just really trying to like always like bring you down or, um, you know, like, and it's like, it wouldn't be worth like leaving over like, you know, like there's good people out there too. So I guess I just really try to like not pay too much attention to the negative people and just kind of try to you know not take it too seriously and like what the negative people say and yeah. just kind of keep going and i, I could yeah. just from the, from the outside looking in it's like damn girl like they really just they really just go in it's almost like oh. it's almost like it is like this it's so sad to see some of the comments i see like just even when you're just live hanging out and i see or even when you're on twitch or other platforms like you now i'm just like damn like is it really that serious like y'all are leaving so many negative comments it's not changing anything you know, like oh, why don't you leave positive comments maybe like encourage Dang, is it really that serious? Is that what he just said? I mean, I, I don't know. I, is this serious? Uh, 
millions of people on the internet seem to uh, would agree that this is serious. Yeah. Dang, is it really that serious? <laughs> wow. Change and growth in a positive way. I just don't. I just don't see that. Like saying negative things is going to change anything. That's kind of what I think because I just don't really know like what some of these people and I'll see some of them will just spam things like gaslighter, liar, this, that. It's like I don't really see how that's going to like help anybody or you know make like any kind of positive change for anything. So. And then it's like those same people that are like, you're mocking haters. It's like, or sorry, you're mocking like concerned people. It's like, I'm really not trying to. It's just do you, some of the people. Have, that, um, right? I don't mean to cut you off, but do you have moderators here on TikTok or no? So, you know, I try to be like careful with it now. Like, oh, because you, they turned on you. Yeah. Girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Like, some of them, like, literally, like, so many of them, like, people. And it, it's like, no hate to them. You know, I'm so sorry to like ex ones that got the wrong idea. But I'm just like, oh, like, it's too bad that sometimes, like, you know, someone, like, it seems like nothing bad's going to happen. And then next thing you know, they're, like, on Reddit doing, like, AMAs. And I'm like, what is there even an AMA to do about guys? Like, I haven't even talked to these people much. Like, yeah. it's like, it's it's just so weird to, to see that. So, you know, I guess I just kind of try to, like, not pay too much attention and just, like, try to stay positive. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just... Oh, boy, talking about Reddit again. Reddit, Reddit, Reddit. Hmm. Yeah. If y'all are one of the Eugenia Cooney Reddit people, she's looking. She's watching. You know, like that the eye from Lord of the Rings, that gigantic Sauron eye thing? Like, that's Eugenia on her Reddit. <laughs> I'm always, like, happy there's good people like you, Rich, and, you know. Well, I, you know, I, I try, because some of the negative comments get to me, too, but not about you, though. Never about you. Don't worry about that. It's just, like, stuff. I'm just like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Like, you know, I always feel like if you're going to judge me, judge me kindly. Like, I'm just... I'm just like anybody else on here. I'm just a guy who put on some triangles and turned on the camera. Like there's there's no magic trick or potion. He's just hard work and dedication and it works out. And like, again, I spoke to a, a friend of mine named Van Luke and she was just like, Rich, like Eugenia Cooney is her own person. She is her own person. And with that being said, like if Eugenia Cooney wants to do anything, she can do it herself. Like she isn't, you know what I'm saying? Like you're your own person, you, like you do that. And so like, I feel like fault should not fall on anyone because it's you, you're your own person, you know? and. I don't, and this is like a horrible example, but I just I just kind of feel like if Eugenia Cooney wants to do anything with her life, you you're it's up to you to do it. Nobody else. No, exactly. And that's another reason I always will feel so bad because like I'll see people kind of like going to people like you, Rich, and oh, another hot take from Rich Lux here. Uh, so I guess basically what he's saying is if you have a problem in life, you should be the one to step up and fix it about yourself. No one, it, the onus or responsibility should never be on anyone else to intervene and help you or guide you in the right direction. I mean, if everyone was capable of solving their own problems and never needed medical intervention or therapy or some, you know, type of guidance from other people, I mean, our, our species would be way more evolved. But... I, I don't get it. Like, if she wants to fix something, you guys, she'll go and do... No. Just, no. You know... Oh, yeah. But you know what, though? It really takes it really takes a strong friend to be your friend. Because then... Because some people will be like... Sorry. Some people will be like, well, why does she get all the attention? Why does she get all the fame or whatever? Oh. Why does she get this? And they get jealous. And it, like, they, it let, they let it muster up and then they want to, like, turn against you, right? And so it really is hard to be your friend if that person is not strong enough for it, if they're a weak person. But if you have friends who have their own thing going on, their own following, they have like their own business and stuff like that, it's like they're not worried about like thinking you as competition or anything like that. Exactly. And then I also know that kind of, I guess like, you know, when people are friends with me, like, it's like, I'm sure it's hard because you have to deal with like all this hate and mm -hmm. people kind of, you know, like attacking you for like being my friend. So it's like, you know, it so was like, like don't, don't say Eugenia Cooney hate. Look, I stand up for Eugenia Cooney. I believe in her. I think that she's funny AF. I think that she's real. And like, I, I've seen like when you, the thing is, you can't tell me anything about Eugenia Cooney because I know I know the good, the bad and the bottom line. And the bottom line, is she's a good person. Right. There's no denying that. If you look at her online presence and you speak to people behind the scenes, she's a generally good person. What's the bad? What's the bad, Rich? Huh? You said that, you know, the good, the bad and the bottom line. What's the bad? Because I, I haven't heard one negative thing or one critique or one anything out of your voice this whole interview. Which, in my opinion, that makes a good interviewer. 
Don't just try to be on the person's good side. Don't try to be their friend. Ask the questions that make both of you uncomfortable. Right? She's not perfect, neither am I, but she's a good person. And I, it just kills me to see you get so many negative comments. Thank you, Rich. And it, and it same always goes for you. And honestly, like, I'm so like grateful to have you as a friend and, you know, like that you like don't turn against me over this stuff. <laughs> Cause, like, not, no, no, because then to me that that shows character and it shows like, wow, if you do it to her, you'll do it to the next person. And then no one will trust you. You kind of burn yourself. You, you, know, you, you can't be trusted. And that makes sense. So, you, yeah. you know, and it's so fragile because. Naji, I'm sorry. I didn't see a super chat from you previously. Um, I, I very may well could have missed it, but I didn't see anything right. If you want to, if you want to type it again in the chat, I'll look out for your name, but thanks so much for the donation. Because people's opinions are very fickle and they change like that. Like right now people love you next day. They hate you and then they love you again. And so that's why you really just got to like do it for yourself and not worry about comments or just do things how you want to do it. And listen, I know that this may not have been like the best interview in the world, but I can tell you it was from the heart. And it's just like, it's just real. Cause I'm just talking to the camera, no script or anything. And like, honestly, like I've had such a good time, like, like talking to you and everything. I'm this sorry if I didn't how we talk, talk, like, This is how we talk anyway, when we battle. Exactly. This I just, definitely feel like it's like, like talking to a friend, which makes it like so much like easier. And you know, like it's well, and, and guys, like, please don't hate on Rich for like anything. He's been so respectful, so kind. And it's like, you know, I honestly appreciate him being, being like that. You know, a lot of people won't be that way. So it's so like, I, I want to, I just, I just want to wrap up this interview because yeah. people are going to be so mad in the comments, so mad about it. I just want to say is that I love you, Eugenia. I'm always here for you. If you ever need anything, you can reach out. And there are a lot of other people out there who love you as well and are always here for you too. And tell your mom, I said, hi, and all your, your loved ones out there. And I just want to send you blessings upon blessings and positive vibes. Oh my gosh, Rich, thank you. Seriously, that means so much to me. And same always goes. Uh-oh. <laughs> Testicle difficulties. <laughs> Before she even can even get a response out, he like cuts the audio. It's like, all right, we're done with this. <laughs> Did Natchi ask their question? I, I saw them put like a an emoji in the chat, but I no. Oh. Yeah, Natchi, I don't I don't I'm sorry. <laughs> I think it went out. So there you go. No, it's off. I can't hear her. That happened. There you go. You're back. Hi. Rich, speaking of, 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 of random phone calls, I just caught one. Another one. Oh, wow. No, I can already see them. Oh, no. They're controlling Eugenia's audio. They won't let her speak. Yes. This one's a Texas one. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, it's not me. Oh, my gosh. Oh, don't worry. Uh, well, you're welcome, Naji. Thank you so much for the compliment, and thank you so much for the donation and for being here. The after interview. Am I covering the after interview? Are you talking about when Rich got on here later and basically said that this was all orchestrated by the attorney and he was given a set list of topics of what he could and could not talk about? Is that what you're referring to? If so... I haven't been able to find a VOD for that, but if I find the video, you bet your butt I'm making a, a response to it. If you find that, I, I, a lot of people are saying that he went live like real quick and said something about it and then deleted it so that there's no more, um, there's no way to watch it anymore. But if someone was screen recording at the time and has it, definitely send it to me on uh, Twitter or email. Anita Marie. Oh, hey there. The only real friend Eugenia ever had was Jacqueline because she took action despite it being for nothing. At least she tried. Well, a lot of Anita, I do agree with you, but a lot of people would say um, on the other side of the thing, the, do, the thing that you do have to consider is um, people kind of thought like, well, you know, Jacqueline and was it for clout? Was it all for clout? But I, I agree. I mean, hey, at least she did something. At least she did something. But um, like the other portion of that conversation is like, well, it's like yeah, kind of a benefit off of this, too. But I agree. Hey, at least you did something. I mean, this this interview, like nothing comes of this. Nothing comes of this. I mean, at least with Jacqueline, somebody, you know, weird. He deleted it immediately. That's just what somebody said earlier. Somebody said he got on and uh, Jacqueline didn't need clout.
my zodiac sign. I'm a Virgo. Very much. I didn't think so. I'm just like, I hope they don't do it to you too. Oh. But same always goes for you. Like, seriously, like, thank you for always being such a good friend. Like, I can't ever thank you enough for that. And like, just tell you how much I appreciate you. And I hope you know too, Rich, that, you know, I'm so sorry for people that give you hate over me, people that give you hate in general. And um, you never deserve it. You deserve so much love always. And I'm always here for you too. Anytime you ever like need anyone or need someone to talk to or anything, I always got your back, Rich. Um, so I want to... Yeah. I want to wrap this up with just one last question for you course, because yeah. this is this is being recorded it's going to go on YouTube on my YouTube channel it's over like two hours long we've been sitting here talking it's on his the after interview is on his you know what I did see I did see um he did have another video after this one if that's the case then I'll make a separate uh video Jeffree Star defends Eugenia Cooney exclusive interview. So the one that we're doing is an hour and 40 minutes. It looks like there's another thing that's two hours and seven minutes. So is this what people are referring to the after interview? I have not watched this two hour video. Yes, it is a VOD on his channel. I'll take a look. I'll take a look. We'll see. We'll see what we'll do. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh... Oh, he should tell Marie again. Um, please don't ever stop making videos. I love your reactions. Your laugh and you're so handsome. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you so much for all the nice words, the donation and for being here. Yeah. And I, I just want to say to you, is there anything that you want to say to the masses? Like anything at all, to your following, to the people in the chat, whatever, like just like, this is the last question. Is there any, any last words you want to say? Okay, so, you know, I guess like really, I want to say like, thank you to everyone that's listening to this and everyone that's just kind of, you know, here in this interview, listening to like what I have to say and what Rich has to say. And I agree that Rich is a good journalist. I agree. I think he's amazing at this. Right. And, um, you know, really like the people that are kind and do support me, I really appreciate you guys so much. Like I can never say thank you enough to you guys. And also always guys like, um, be kind to Rich and be kind to like, you know, people I'm friends with. Cause like, I'm so grateful for them. Rich is an amazing person. I'm so happy we could like do this interview today. And Rich is a good journalist. <laughs> oh my. And I just really appreciate him. Like he's an amazing person. He's an amazing friend. So, um, yeah, you know, give lots of love to Rich. Like he Thank deserves so it. Drop, drop hearts in the chat for Eugenia on both sides. Drop hearts in the chat, hearts whatever the chat. color you want, hearts in the chat. So thank, thank you for your time. Again, I just want to, I want to wrap up. So thank you for being here and giving me the time to talk to you. I hope I did okay. I hope I didn't offend you with some of the questions. <laughs> did, you, did you hear that? She went to talk again. He went, I'm wrapping up. <laughs> He's probably like, I'm only being paid for an hour and a half. We're well over that. I, we're, we're, we're cutting this out. <laughs> Okay. Really so sweet and respectful and i really appreciate that because it's kind of like we were saying like how you never know what some interviews and yeah. you know seriously you're amazing i had such a good time like talking to you today and everything yeah. I, I just want you to know that it was it was difficult for me to talk to you in this because like to me i, I did not want to disrespect you i did not want to overstep my boundaries or say anything that was out of bounds to make you upset and so i did, really didn't want to do any of that so you know i understand that no, that's not why it was difficult for you. It was difficult for you because you were talking about very controversial topics and you had to select your words very carefully and you needed to portray the person that is rational yet on her side. And that's a very difficult point of view to communicate to YouTube because you really can't do both. You really can't do both. So I think that that's why this was difficult for you. I mean, honestly, I said it earlier in this stream and everything. I don't even know why he did this. I don't know why he did this. Um, this is a very awkward situation to be put in. 
Um, again, there's a lot of hills that he seems that he was he would like to die on in terms of arguing that I just don't understand whatsoever. So that's why it was difficult for you. Not because you didn't want to step on anyone's toes or accidentally disrespect her. That, like, that, that's the least of your concerns. It, it's... Oh my. Oh my, y'all. Journalist. I know. I cannot believe that that word was used. And not everyone's going to like the, our, our two hour conversation, but hopefully you gain some knowledge out of it and you walk away knowing something. But it was, it was kind of tough because, and you know, I consider you a friend. I would never want to uh, upset you. Oh, and I so appreciate that, Rich. Like, honestly, like, you've been so sweet and respectful. And I think, like, I agree with the person that said you'd be a great journalist because I thought it was a really great interview. And I'm sorry, people, if you guys didn't like my answers, don't blame that on him. That's on me. Because sometimes things can be a little bit hard to talk about, you know? Yeah. But Rich, I think me talking about things, like, is easy as it as it can be. Like, you really. Know, and he's I, amazing. I, so. I do want to say this, Eugenia, before I leave. You know what I think you really should do is sit down one day and just write, a, like, a tell-all book. Crazy. I don't know if anyone would read it, but <laughs> I think a lot of people will be interested in, in reading the tell all book because there's a lot that people don't know about you that they find so fascinating about you as well. Because the fact that you have so many people in your live stream and this live stream just listening to us talk, there's a lot of general interest in you and people care. And so think about it because I know I would buy it. I would love to read it. Oh, thank you so much, Rich. And if you ever had a book too, <laughs> the first it's called Clowning Around. A tell all book. From her would be pretty pointless because a lot of what needs to be said and a lot of what people are wanting to hear she has not acknowledged within herself it has not been brought to those those concepts have not been brought out of her subconscious because a lot of it is repressed she wants to think that she the way that she wants to think so i don't think that there would be anything for her to write in a tell-all because her perception of reality is her reality, not what actually is, if that makes sense. I might have done a poor way of com in communicating that. But I, I just, there would, the, really the only person that would be able to do that or, or even talk about it and everything, it wouldn't be her. It would probably be the mom because the mom has experienced everything. And while I think that the mom is Delulu, um, I think that, she would probably be able to speak on things a bit more. All right, an auto an autobiography I read. I like that. Yeah, but, but anyway, I'm really rich. Like you know, I've like seen a lot of videos where you were, you've talked about like I won't get into that because you know I don't want to. Like, yeah, yeah, that's fine, fine. But I'll just say like you know seriously, you're an amazing person. So I think like if you wrote something too, it would definitely be a really great book, and like I would definitely read it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for your time, Eugenia. I love you. I hope I did a good job. I'm going to end it here. Um, it, it was long. It was a long. <laughs> did not expect it to be this long. <laughs> um, and so I hope your lawyer doesn't get mad at me or anything. I hope we're okay. <laughs> oh my God, Rich, I would never. Like, okay, no, I'll be, okay, I'll be okay. Woo. Okay. Woo. All right. And um, just thank you again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and log off. You guys, this is Eugenia Cooney. If you don't know who she is, definitely check her out with Why Wouldn't You Know She Is? Duh. And, and so rich. Like, guys, everybody, like, I'm sure most of you guys do, but if you don't, like, follow him, he's amazing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Eugene. I'll see you later. Okay. Everything, Rich. Love you. Okay. So it just popped up the two hour one. All right. We're doing it. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Woo. Um, I don't know what we're going to do about this. Two hours, Jeffrey defense. Let's just watch a little bit of it. And I'm so sorry you guys have had to deal with that, too, because, like, seriously, you guys are such good people, and oh, we I love definitely it. know how that is. <laughs> Me and Rich love you. Oh, he doesn't look like the jester in this one. Look, no makeup. Look, they're not even on here. It's just him. It's just a picture of them. What is it? <laughs> I'm not doing the two-hour. <laughs> All you in the chat are like, yes! <laughs> No, I don't want to do it right now. Oh, God. Vol Laser. Thank you so much for the super sticker. That little Halloween cat. Thank you. <laughs> Tomorrow. Ugh. Mm. I don't know.
You sent me a timestamp on Twitter. Okay, thank you so much. I will look at it. <laughs> they are getting ISs. Like, what do they do? They just talk about... I mean, at, at one point, it just becomes him. Oh, look, he, he put the makeup on. Was did, Does he do his makeup during the interview? Does he get so bored during the interview that he does his makeup? Oh, he does his makeup later on. And help for themselves, they're, they're not going to stay there. They have to want that help themselves. That individual, that person, specific person, accountable for their own actions. Their Years ago, I never thought she had ED. People are negative is because they think. Who's this woman talking? Does anyone know? So he does his makeup for a good 30 minutes while someone else talks on a monetized video. Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. We're just joking. Jordy, take a drink of water. It's, um... I'm like... It's like gone. Like my, I mean, I've been sitting here like three hours without a refill. I finished this. A lot of this is just ice. Someone called in and told him it was the worst interview ever. The woman is Van Luke. Okay, I don't know who that is. Jordy, do you even have makeup? <laughs> No. The only the only way I care to accessorize myself are glasses, and these are kind of needed to see, right? <laughs> and I will trim my beard every now and then. <laughs> Other than that, what you see is what you get. <laughs> Just a small sip, though. Ugh, y'all are toxic. So, I mean, this isn't a two-hour interview. Okay, so, like, if they talk for, like, 50 minutes like this, I could probably make this into a video. But as far as him sitting there and doing his makeup, I don't think that this warrants me needing to provide a reaction to it. You know what I mean? So, if anything, I would do up until the three of these are done speaking. The three of these. The three of these people are done speaking. And Ben Luke, I mean, do we have people in here saying you're just leeching off her? Girl, well, whatever. <laughs> you know, I mean, Van Luke supports her. And, and I've been and, friends with her behind the yeah. scenes for years. So and, and just like I said earlier, I mean, the only footage that exists of me and Eugenia that's public because mm -hmm. me and her spoke privately for, for the longest. Water together. Leave us alone. There you go. Jeffrey, thank you for being like such a supportive friend for her. OK, so it's looking like they talk for a good 50 minutes in the beginning. Rich does his like makeup during this intermission period here and then they talk more at the end. So I'm thinking what I will do. I'm not sure if I want to do another live stream tomorrow, but I definitely will cover what is said up until about here. Like right before he starts doing his makeup, I'll, I'll cover all this. And then at the end, when they start talking again, we'll do that. Van Luke is from you nowadays. Oh, wow. So they've been around a while, huh? That's a hot take. I never knew that she had it. <laughs> Y'all are funny in the chat. Like as soon as I click the new video going, yes. <laughs> What do y'all think of pretzel M&M's? Thoughts on pretzel M&M's? I really like pretzel M&M's. I think because I have a green screen filter up right now, the, the green one will look weird. Oh, look. It's like hollow. Eh, whatever. All right, y'all. No, we're not. We're not doing another two-hour one. But seriously, go 
Go to go do something. It's Saturday night. Everybody go out. Go, um... Go... What's in the movies right now? Anything, anything fun out in the movies right now? Probably not. Is there any good scary movies out yet? I want to see the new Exorcist. Has, is that out yet? The new Exorcist with the two little girls that run away? I definitely want to see that. Are they doing a new Halloween this year? I don't think so. I saw they're doing um, Friday Night at Freddy's with the guy from... Uh, what is his name? He was in Bridge to Terabithia and Hunger Games. H H Hutcherson? Hutchinson? Something like that. I don't know if I would want to go see that. That seems a little bit... I don't know, just a little bit juvenile for me. I don't know. Uh, hey, dear Dana. I made a legit statement about how that works. Statement was removed in channel. What do you mean? Here on YouTube or on TikTok? What are you talking about? Or in this stream? I didn't... I, didn't, I have not deleted anyone's comments in this, if that's what you're referring to. Channel, whoa. Oh, you mean like, you mean like in one of their, one, in like one of their chats? Oh, wow. I think that's a, that's what you were referring to. Yeah, like in one of their chats, you said something along the lines of that. Oh my, that's spooky. Oh my. Josh Hutchinson. Yeah, yeah. I'll always know him from uh, Bridge to Terabithia. Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, I thought it was Friday Night at Freddy's. My bad. I'm far too broke to go out. We'll go for a walk. Well, next you'll tell me that the weather's bad. <laughs> or you'll tell me that it's 3 a.m. <laughs> hey, listen, just because it's raining and it's 3 a.m. doesn't mean you can't go for a walk. <laughs> you want a good ghost story? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of good ghost stories on here that you could look into. Stop, Jordy. That movie's so sad. I know, but it's just like memorable to me. I remember I tried to make a, my own Terabithia in my backyard, except I didn't have to like rope swing over, uh, over a dangerous, um, like river to get to it though. The humidity is unbearable. It's not too nice here either. Don't leave us, Jord. Well, uh, I have plans. <laughs> <sighs> I'm going to go to dinner in maybe like an hour. I, I want to watch the new... Um, Drag Race UK episode. I think the second episode's out. There's just a few things I want to do. I, guys, I can't catch a day off. <laughs> oh, y'all just want me to stream all day long. I can't catch a day off. Oh, this is. Uh. And you know what? If you do, if you do see me in public and you want a picture, you know what I'm going to tell you? I don't owe that to you. You're not entitled to a photo with me. God. Jordy's like, see you later, losers. I got plans. <laughs> that's not that's not true. That's not true. Jordy gonna party tonight? <laughs> well. Marlene, hey! Jordy love you. She can guess. Uh, Wanna change the fact that oh my. Um also can I be your moderator? <laughs> oh my. Uh <laughs> Uh, interesting. Thank you so much for the donation. Again, you guys, just because I don't read out certain messages, that doesn't mean that I'm ignoring you or because I don't want to read it out. It's just because it's in, you know, rules from YouTube. Rules from YouTube. Love from Seattle. I was in Seattle three months ago. I had a really nice time there. Can you live stream a Tinder date? Well, I would have to go on a Tinder date to be able to live stream those. Is it a date? No, it's not a date. Give in to peer pressure. You're going to go to sleep. All right, Munchia. Good night. 
get a Twitch. I have a Twitch, but I don't really use it, you guys. I mean, I I it would I think it's I think it's the same as my Instagram. I think it's just Insta Jordy. Insta Jordy on um Twitch. Insta it's the Insta Jordy on Twitch and uh Instagram and then Twitter is oh lordy it's Jord. I already went for a walk. We'll go for another one. <laughs> All right, y'all. Please enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um Will we do another live stream to finish this all up? I'm not saying no, but I'm not saying yes. But if you see a video pop out of me just responding to, uh, you know, this and everything, then that probably means no live stream. But thank you so much for hanging out, you guys. I had a really nice afternoon with everybody. Um, thank you for everybody that sent in a donation. That was extremely generous of you. I really appreciate it. Do I watch anyone else in GW? Girl World? I watch, I don't, I, I don't know if I would consider Eugene a girl world, um, but definitely Amber Lynn and Foodie. Watch AI Eugene, yeah, I have seen that clip. I have seen that clip. All right, all everybody, please go enjoy your night. Do something fun. And I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Bye.